Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, and welcome to this Friday night broadcast with Ren Diggity Dog. We're chilling up here on top of Hot Guy HQ after a very professional landing right on top of this tiny pole. Hi, guys. What's up? <laughs> I can't actually... I, I, I'm quite surprised I managed to land on this, to be fair. I think we might stay up here for a while, just because... Um, this is probably the most skillful thing I've done in Minecraft in a very long time. How's everybody doing? You guys good? I hope you guys have had a great week and uh, are ready for a weekend of chilling. A weekend of relaxing. Mm-hmm. Um, are those things up there broken? Oh no, they're not broken. Okay, good. Goodness. Welcome to the stream, guys. Welcome to the stream, friends. Shall we go live? Boop. Here we are. <laughs> On the server. We're chilling with Cub, Pearl, and Azuma. I've been watching some of my fellow hermits streaming today. Oh, it's been it's been lovely. I've been doing some editing. I started off watching Impulse do some Hermitcraft GeoGuessr, which is a thing, by the way. I was watching Pearl also do some streaming. Just been watching Azuma streaming. I'm thinking, let's go find Azuma. Have a chat with them to kick things off today. Uh, by the way, want to take a, while we are at the very beginning of the stream, big shout out to our YouTube people. All of the uh, amazing people on YouTube that are enjoying our Twitch VODs on the YouTube Rendog TV channel. Hello. Uh, YouTube people. Hold on. We have got, we've got to go big camp. For this. Uh, ex excuse me. YouTube people. Hi. Hi there. Please could you leave some comments on the VODs? You guys, you're watching the VODs, you're enjoying them, but you don't even like leave a comment. We've got like three comments on the last VOD. It's outrageous. I mean, is this is this specimen of a man not good enough for you to leave me a simple comment? Seriously though, please leave some comments for the algorithm, thanks. Uh, by the way, previous stream didn't make it onto YouTube. Yes. Um, I reviewed the twaddle that we got up to in the previous stream, which was on Tuesday. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that we crossed some, some twaddle boundaries that I am not comfortable sharing with YouTube. <laughs> so uh, the previous stream shall forever remain in the history books of Raindog TV here on Twitch, and it shall not be making its way to YouTube. The twaddle was too strong, yes. Um, there was one particular moment that concerned me that I won't get, I won't go into again, but um, some things and stuffs were said and uh, immediately regretted afterwards. We're, okay, we're going to do our best to make sure this VOD gets onto YouTube, okay guys? So let's keep twaddle to a minimum today, alright? Uh, Chatty Artist, thank you very much for the 10 months. And Leslie is here with a bunch of biddies. Thank you so much, Leslie. That's very kind of you. It's not much, but a token of my appreciation of you, Ren. Thank you for being such a wonderful human. Leslie, you've given me so very much this year. Um, and this is, you say it's not much, it's lots. Thank you very much, Leslie, for everything that you've done for me. Rope Bird with the 18 month double Twitch baby, baby. Isn't she beautiful, Rope? Damn. Happy Friday, Ren. I'm currently searching for an ancient, ancient city. Good luck. Solaris is here with the 18 months also. Finally, I'm awake when you're streaming. Missed your face. Hey, Solaris. Nice to see you. And Kerry's here with the 42 months. OG Resub. Beautiful. Hey, Kerry. What's up, baby? What's happening? Guys, where is Azuma? Is he here? This is Azuma's base, right? Or Azuma's area. There's things and things and stuffs happening. I is this Azuma's area? Have I gone into the wrong thing? Yeah, o Twaddle only happens on Tuesdays. Twaddle Tuesday. Winter Bin, thank you for the five months in a row. Thanks for getting me into magic. Oh, you played your first game the other day. Oh, dude. Please tell me you're playing real life magic, though. Look, online magic, arena, and MTGO, excellent. 
but real life magic sitting across a table with another nerd and slinging cardboard there's nothing better i hope it's real life magic yeah it is zoom space right where is it i know that he's uh, he was streaming like it looked like he was doing some technical stuff where's he at Man, Azuma always goes hard on his bases, doesn't he? Jeez, look at this place. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, man, Azuma, you are a maniac, dude. This is so cool. Oh, he's helping at Pearl's Junk Shop. Okay, so we actually... We need to go back to town, then. All right. Yep. Back to town we go. Guys, thanks for getting the hype train um, not started. <laughs> Uh, I see what Twitch has done. They're very sneaky. Basically, like, as the streamer, I get a notification from Twitch saying, a hype train has almost started, which I believe is my, if I was a professional streamer, I would be trying to get you guys to start the hype train. But that's not how we roll on this channel. It was many, many a hype train last stream, and you guys were unbelievably generous last stream. So, we're good. Your streams always make the evening much more fun. I am glad, Ever. Yes, it is Friday. Here we are, guys. We're playing Minecraft together. Other people are out. They're in clubs. Doing whatever happens in clubs. I don't do clubs. I never did clubs. I mean, when I, I used to go to clubs when I was young, but I, I was the guy that stood in the, the back of the club, just kind of creepily watching everything. Not because I was enjoying the uh, voyeurism of it but because i was too scared to talk to any other human beings <laughs> yeah that was that guy i hardly went to clubs though i mean i reckon i've probably been to um in my life like i could count the number of clubs i've been to on my hands that's how many clubs uh, ho just a whole bunch of twaddle goes on in clubs in clubs that i'm not interested in listen i do en enjoy a good bit of twaddle every now and then, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, not club twaddle. No, thank you. Oh, we're off to a bad start for YouTube, aren't we? Let's go find some <laughs> some hermits to talk to before we get into serious trouble, guys. Here's the junk shop. Where are the hermits? Shall we turn on our microphone? Yeah, hello? Yeah, hello? Zuma, Pearl, Zuma, Pearl, Zuma. Hello. Pearl. Hi. Zuma. You made me jump. Can't you hear me? Dang it. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get my ear my my earphones on. Zuma. Hi. Pearl. Can you hear me, Ren? Zuma. What's going on? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> can he hear me or not? It's over. I think he can. I think I'm here. I can hear you, dude. Oh, you can. Wait. Oh, okay. You can. <laughs> where I are you, bro? Have been nice. I, well, where are you? I where are like you? Wait. You're getting, dude. You're fading out. You're fading out, brother. Come back to me, X. Come back to me, brother. It's Uma. Is it an audio tape? Honestly, I think it could be. It's Uma. Where are you, bro? Ben, I need you. What's one plus one equals what? Oh, that. Ham. Wait. This is a prank, surely. It's a ghost. <laughs> it's Uma, I Hello? need you. I'm in trouble, bro. Where are you? Help me. Broadcast your coordinates. Come to the sound of my voice, Zuma. Wait, it's this way. Hello? Down the stairs. No, don't fly away! <sighs> Unbelievable. Are they? Hello? 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 Ben, please! Azuma, come into the building, dude. Where are you? In the building. Oh, okay, I'm hold on. Clue. I'm gonna guide you. Okay, I'm gonna guide you. Okay. 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 Turn right. Go straight. 
Turn left. Go straight. Turn right. Turn left. Turn right. <laughs> Go down. Okay. What the heck? Hello. Hi. <laughs> Friend, that was the most disorienting experience I ever had. I wish you could have just said, yes, I can hear you. Oh, that brought me much joy. <sighs> right, now get back in there. <laughs> you can move about in this one. Ooh, hold on. Let's have a meeting in here, X. This is an important okay. business that we need to attend to. Wait, how did you do that? How oh, did I do go. what? There, Hello. Got it. Hi. Your totem's Hi. on my face, dude. I'm sorry. It's very it's, rude. Uh, not much I can do about that. It's not a lot of space down here. What 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 are you up to, man? What's what's was, going on? I was doing water streams and redstone. Mm. And you were. Um, uh, I just started streaming, and then uh, chat told me to go and annoy you. I had wow. nothing to do with this. Wow. Yeah. That's just so unexpected of chat. They never tell us to do things like that, do they? <laughs> They're usually so well behaved and polite. Never. Never, never. I, I, I wanted to ask you a question, though. Mm hmm. Go ahead. Okay. It's quite a serious question, though. All right. Are you ready? I mean, it doesn't doesn't feel like it's going to be serious, considering <laughs> the current situation. Okay, no, it, it is that it is. <laughs> it is actually a serious question. Okay. This was a question that was asked of me uh, this mm -hmm. morning by one of my friends, my my out of um, Minecraft YouTube world friend. Wait, you have a real life friend? I mean, just one. Oh, okay. How, how did you get one? <laughs> he's just... He's been clinging on since I was young. Just never just never oh, let go. Oh, cling on. <laughs> it's just the Got cling on. on. Anyway. I'm Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> he, he asked me, uh, if you rewind to before YouTube was a thing in your real life. Uh-huh. Okay, so go okay, all the way back okay. there to where whatever you were doing back then. That was a miserable time. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was terrible, actually, if I think about it. But we don't think too much about actually what was happening. But the question was, did you ever imagine that you would be playing Minecraft for a living, like, 12 years later? Uh, absolutely not. Yeah. Not an inkling. It actually did. That's exactly was my first reaction. I realized that there is lit... I, I wouldn't have guessed this, what you and I are doing right in this moment, my, my really good friend. Never in a I mean, I wouldn't I have mean... guessed we'd have been doing this this morning, so <laughs> this is really unusual. You know? I don't know what you mean. I, I didn't wake up and think, me and Ren in a trapdoor hole, talking deep questions. That's, <laughs> that was not, I didn't think that was on the agenda today. Yeah, well, the question did make me realize two things. Number one, we are exceptionally weird human beings. I think that's true of everyone, though. Yeah. We just put it on display. That's true. Uh, number two, we are insanely lucky. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I had a, I had but... a, mo a moment of appreciation for uh, Hermacraft, the audience, you guys, e everything today. I uh, had a little moment of clarity where I realized how incredibly lucky we are, we are as hermits to do this. For sure. Yeah. That is Incredibly all. Lucky. That's all I wanted to say. You, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Well, there's something I'd like to add to that then. Okay, go is on. Is that we couldn't envision where we are now, right? But what I think people watching should do, because I know a lot of people want to be a part of something like Hermitcraft, is to not... Like, you want to find the thing that you couldn't think of right now anyway, right? Yeah. Like... Yep. Think 10 years ahead. You want to in 10 years time, you want to look back and say I would have had no idea I'd be here. But how do you get to a spot like that? You have to do stuff. Mm. Like you have to you have to be aiming to do something mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. like you said it was luck, but we didn't get here without uploading videos and True. trying to create something. True. So luck is a huge part of it, but luck isn't like going to pluck someone who's doing nothing out of a field and give them everything. 
you know, this you have to be doing something. That's so true, X. And you know what we do uh, is so interesting because when when you watch it from the outside, okay, it, it kind of looks easy to achieve. Oh, you just record Minecraft with a, a screen recorder and make a video out of it, right? It seems quite Absolutely. simple. But the fascinating thing is, and, and I don't know if you can remember your first, say, 100 videos that you did. Right. I remember, honestly, I remember the first 100 pretty well, I'd say. Okay. My first 100, my life went like this. I was working a full-time job because I could, you know, I wasn't earning anything on YouTube. There was no partner program back then. Uh, but I really wanted to do, make videos. I woke up at five. I would record for an hour. Then I would cut the hour into four 15-minute chunks. And those were my episodes. No, no cuts. Wow. It was just one takes. An hour, one take. That's how we cut did them it up. then. That's how we did it, man. Then I would, I would render all four at the same time. Back in those days, rendering would take like six hours. Oh, I'd go to work. I'd get the home. Horror. All the videos are rendered. I'd upload them. Get like two views a video. I did that for like a year. Just every day. The same, wake You're up pro and productivity beast, boom, man. Boom. I, dude, I was, I was grinding super hard. And that was harder. That's harder work than any real, like any job, any office job. That's for sure. How about you, dude? Like, like, tell me about your first hundred videos. I wanna, I wanna know. How did you make them? Now, I, I had a different experience because I wasn't doing the let's play thing. I was also not talking. I was making tutorials, so oh. I was putting text on screen with my editing. I was doing stuff step by step, layer by layer. I was trying to like put the information across as clear as I could. Hmm. And I kind of hit hit the ground running. Like my first video, you know, got views and got subscribers, and then so did my second and my third. And you know, by the time I'd made twenty videos, I kind of knew that I would make another twenty. Hmm. So I had I had a bit of a different experience. I didn't have that like slow wind up like most people have. I got fortunate to hit the ground running, and I think my early videos stick in my head just because there was like a whole bunch of goofing around in a test world mm -hmm. and like finding a solution and then presenting it and so like my first they're presenting them all like, right sorry they're pre <laughs> <laughs> that was uh dropping dropping blows on all my foes in the g team yeah they're presenting them all right yeah yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> i'm throwing a file over that <laughs> Totally interrupted your flow. I'm so sorry. I can help it. It's good. I, I think I think the point I was trying to land on is that they became like little creations, and yeah. so they were like my little thing that I put in a box, and so each one was unique, and so it kind of like yeah. stuck in my mind like that. If you ask me about like the first like hundred episodes of Hermitcraft or whatever, a lot of that becomes a blur because it's just playing Minecraft, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess my point is that the you know those videos you didn't make them in an hour, right? You didn't uh, just like sit down and, and then an hour later there's a video. Like there was a lot was, of work it was that like, put into it. Yeah, there was there was lots of tinkering in red. Like I, like when I first started playing, I had I had a little Let's Play world or whatever, but I was more interested in creative mode and redstone. And I would spend probably hours in there. And then when it came to the video, though, it was like I, 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 like, I had kind of done all the hard work. So like, again, the, the process was a little different. It was like... Yeah. Yeah, maybe an hour or two to make a video and then and then upload that. Yeah, man. Yep. I, and I guess that's just my point for all young people that want to be YouTubers. Like, it doesn't just happen like this. Mm. There's a lot of... Uh, and, and, and I think the real lesson that can be learned from, from most hermits is that many of us were on the grind for years before we even could think about uh, going full-time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that young people don't actually realize that um, you're, talk it, it, you're talking about years that need to be invested into it. It doesn't just, you don't just start making videos and a week later you're on, you're on Homercraft. That's right. Uh, and we also did that not knowing it would be a job. Yes. <laughs> um, I've got this yes. quote here that's been shared with me. Apparently Impulse has this on his monitor. It says, luck is when hard work meets opportunity. Mm. Which I really mm. like. Mm. Mm. Preach it, brother. That's, uh, that, that's so true. Because when we first started... When we all first started, there, there was always in the back of our mind, well, it, I'm just talking for myself, but I'm sure it's the same with everybody. There was always in the back of our mind that this might be able to, to, to be something one day. Yeah. However, at the time, I was just having so much fun playing this game, which I'd fallen in love with. And just the buzz of a little small community building up around me was just like, it was so addictive. I just could not get yeah. away from it. It was just... 
You know what? Oh, I amazing. think we might have been a bit more lucky than we realised in the way that we we came up in like a more of an innocence yeah. era of YouTube because yeah. now, like, if someone wants to be a YouTuber, they probably got this like vision in their mind yeah. that like they'll get to a point where they've got like an editor and someone who helps them make mm -hmm. thumbnails and does SEO and they've mm -hmm. got a strategy and you know they're gonna they're gonna make those Mr. Beast type videos and like. Like the YouTube game is so much more understood. And when we were doing it, it was more of like a platform and we just put up our stuff and people came yeah. to it. Whereas now there's like these big pressures to. It was know, more like Facebook the algorithm. back then. Like, like uh, not in the, the function of Facebook, but in the, the feel of Facebook, you know, where you were putting yourself on display basically and yeah. trying to get people to enjoy what you made you know a little bit like it felt like it was more social media than i think it was um, more individual like yeah people that yeah. you would find people yeah. that were creating were more themselves and now it's become it would homogenize to be the word dude that's like, a, that that's word a just big word yeah that's where, a big where, word like for you, a friday can we you know, can we I, relax on the big words for, on a friday <laughs> I mean, it might it might even be the wrong word, but you know, I found this video the other day of some guy who was playing around in the Windows command prompt. Right now, you're probably picturing some nerdy sounding voice waffling on for ages yep. about like commands. No, this guy, Mr. Beast, his videos. He was like, "Yo, guys, we're gonna we're gonna go into the administrator mode and oh, look at this <laughs> sweet little command and it like <laughs> zooms go in, it goes boink, and then mode. yeah." Yeah, and it like zooms in on the command and he makes it all like fun and he's like really excited that he just pressed enter and he made his computer do something like I couldn't believe it. I watched it. And I was like, I mean, this is good. I'm learning stuff, but this just has the Mr. Blue Beast blueprint all over it. And that's what I mean is that there's like yeah. now people want to it's like a negative feedback loop with the algorithm where the algorithm gives people what they want to see, mm -hmm. but then people figure out how to like really gain people's attention yeah. and work with that yeah. algorithm yeah. and then other people start to mimic it and it becomes like a feedback loop yeah where now that's what people expect you know because if someone wants to learn about the command prompt i mean they're gonna pick that guy over someone who just sounds a bit dull yeah that's very <laughs> like basically <true. laughs> right it's really weird it's really weird yeah dude uh, it's it's crazy I, I you know i didn't even want to know what this all looks like in 10 years i mean honestly it's who knows it's, it's nuts yeah it, i it's, feel you uh, pretty scary I, I will probably still be playing hermitcraft let's be honest that's true <laughs> you know it, it's it, like we'll be down to like a thousand viewers across the group but we'll still be on the grind baby still be on I the could, grind i could see that for sure yeah definitely man Oh, dude, I'll play Minecraft with you, my brother, into the sunset, into our old age, you and me, X. I love it. To the end. <laughs> we'll have to get like old man beard skins. Yeah. Gray I've, hair. Dude, I've, I've got. Luckily, some... I got this helmet on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting some wisdom in my beard, man. I, I, it's not. It's the color gray doesn't exist in my mind. It's the color wisdom. All right. I like that attitude. Yeah, getting get a little bit of wisdom these days. But you know what? I'm, I'm personally, fine. I'm fine with getting older. Oh, me you too. Know? I'm 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 the happiest today than I've than I've been in the you know like as uh, age wise. I mean, I was an idiot when I was young. Jeez. Oh, I feel the same. Idiot. Yeah, you get more mature. You get more handle on yourself. You know, you know yeah. yourself better. You learn to be better with other people. Mm. Uh, it's it's Zuma, all I, I don't mean to uh, hooten and a, and a tootin tootin my own hooter toot, but um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I'm the handsomest that I've ever been on, on this very day today. Yeah. For real. Even with those grey hairs, Ren? Uh, wisdom hairs. Wisdom hairs. Dude, I got the You're ladies. the wisest you've ever I got been. the gentlemen. I got everybody in between in the line, baby. Every Everybody's in the line. Everybody's Everybody in the line. Everybody get in line. <laughs> <laughs> God, we can talk a bunch of twaddle, can't we? My lord. I know. It's good fun. <clears throat> anyway, shall we be on our merry way? <laughs> we got things if, to do. Yeah. I'm in... <laughs> I was in, I was enjoying. I appreciate the break. It's nice to just get your head out of what you're doing sometimes and have a little chat, yeah. isn't it? No, I thought I'd come and. It, like I said, it was my chat's idea to come and bother you. So blame them. It Feel free idea. to bother me anytime. Right. I'll uh, I'll tell you what I'm up to on Hermitcraft at Dude, the moment. Uh, I, I, you're looking particularly derpy in your helmet tonight. I I. I don't like how the Netherrack helmet looks on my head. No, it, it makes, you, it makes you look more. so derpy. Please put it back on. It's, it's hilarious. 
Do you know what we... I think we need to get, like, that invisible <laughs> arm up. This... Is it that Look funny? His little face. Is it that funny? Oh. I feel like we need that invisible armor mod that they had <laughs> on Empires. Oh, God. I'm sorry, man. It's you, you just you look so adorable. I just want to like scratch the top of your head when you're wearing that helmet. Oh, <laughs> uh, whatever you say, man. Whatever you say. I, I don't like how it looks, but okay. Yeah, because it, 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 it like covers your you know comes down uh, just above your eyeballs. I think that's where the derpiness comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you got no trims yet? What's going on? No, no. As I was, I was gonna say, like, um, I, I'm kind of potentially like taking a bit of a break here on hermit craft oh, okay i've i've just i don't know like i feel like i'm constantly wanting to do more than i can mm -hmm. like with inspiration and i'm just always always just on this list of jobs and stuff and i yep. feel like something's got to change and i want to experiment for a while and okay. just see what happens if i uh take a little bit of a break from hermit craft so i'm on here like i'm still gonna stream and, and like hang out with peeps okay. and stuff i still want to be a part of everything but i you know i'm gonna come on here to just do odd things and stuff so i haven't been making an episode in which i probably would have done armor trim and stuff like that yeah, right yeah. so yeah i kind of taking it easy and i'm just trying to finish off this storage system for pearl at the moment but, um but she's now decorated and it looks awesome it does look awesome dude jeez looking yeah. epic in here man well, that's cool, Pretty man. Cool. Like, so, like, so what else are you doing? If um, when you say break, are, are you doing like other stuff instead? Yeah, what I'm gonna doing? make a few like one-off videos, like some thought piece type stuff, mm. myth busting, you know. Um, and I'm hoping to get in front of like this just endless list of stuff that needs fixing. You know, like what is it with getting older? It just feels like you're always doing things and jobs and stuff. It's because um, you. It's because you finally take responsibility. That's why. Yeah, taking more responsibility. That makes so much like, sense. Like, for example, it's only the older folk that will pick up litter, right? <laughs> Do you know what I was literally just thinking? <laughs> I was literally thinking about how I had a bunch of, like, garden waste in my bag, in the back garden today. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I sort of thought, I just went, right, this needs taken care of, and started, like, carting it down the street into the bins. And yeah. that took me a while. You're hella old now. But, dude. like, the old me probably would have just left it. You yeah. know, and let the bin men collect it. Yep. Maybe that's the problem. No, it's, it, you suddenly take responsibility for things. And then, because when you're young, you just, you don't care if the there's a screw loose in the cupboard and, you know, yeah. whatever. But like, when you start to appreciate what you have and really want to look after, you're like, okay, I must sort everything. Everything must be sorted, you know? Dude, yes. I, like, I've, I, I'm at the point now where I have two two, like, lists every day. List one is, like, work list, and list two is, like, responsibility list and i try i try yeah. like cross one responsibility off each day you know like uh today for example there was like a rattling ah. in my my hob fan you know in the <laughs> in the in the hob oh. oh i know exactly what this is I, like the same thing happens to me all the time yeah. something breaks slightly and now you want to yeah. fix and it and i was like so no just leaving it you know five years ago i've been like whatever who cares but today i unscrewed that bad boy got stuck in there found what was rattling fixed it put it all back together two hours later had a cup of tea you know set Tell up a bean works. bag it works beautifully and i sat there oh, thinking about how responsible i'd been so glad to hear it yeah because sometimes that story ends with like and i made it worse <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you know? no 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 listen listen here my dude i'm i'm from south africa man i'll diy the living hell out of anything ah uh, see i'm the opposite of diy i can't fix stuff like i am terrible at using my hands and yeah, well, that, screwdrivers are that, like my worst enemy. To me, that just sounds like excuses. Oh, it is not excuses, friend. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. Get, you Believe know, me. sort it out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you were here with me right now and like gave me something to fix with a screwdriver, in like two minutes, you'd be like, give it here. <laughs> like a drill sergeant. Uh... Get better at DIY. That is not on my list of things to do, fortunately. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, yeah, dude, speaking of gardening, this this year I've gotten stuck into the garden and uh, discovered a newfound joy. It's amazing. It's just real yeah, life Minecraft, it. man. It's real life terraforming. You spend three That's hours it. in the sun. 
you you know i had this little patch of lawn out, out front with like really um weed that was really weeded over i had two flower beds full of like gunk you know weeds and nonsense <laughs> went to the garden center <laughs> Wow, this ad this conversation got adult fast. Went to the garden center, <laughs> got all the tools required. You know, I went and got my pickaxe and my shovel and my and my uh, efficiency five axe. Brought it all back, cleaned that garden up, dude. Took me six seven hours, and now it's pristine. Listen, let me tell you, dude. The other day, an old lady from across the street. She's about sixty. Her name's Marianne. She came over, knocked on my door to say to me what a wonderful job I'd done on the garden. She just said, oh, hello. I just wanted to say, you've done a magnificent job on this garden. I'm so glad you've moved into the neighborhood because the previous people did nothing with this garden and you've just done a fabulous job. Please come over for That's a cup awesome. of tea later. That's awesome. Brent, have you ever been to America? Um, I went to New York, yes, and Boston. D did you notice how much friendlier Americans are? Oh, ridiculous ridiculous yeah yeah like yeah the thought of a neighbor coming over and saying something <laughs> about my garden like not that my garden's great or anything that feels like something that never happens here in the uk uh, but, but I, in america no, but but x i live out I in the country i live in a small town the small towns are different That's to cities true. and cities people are are much more suspicious of one another you know yeah i live in like i live i live in like the middle like a town suburb yeah there's countryside nearby but it's not it's not countryside you know well, I've I've made a I've made a new friend, uh, Marianne. She's lovely, and I'm going to have awesome. her around for tea the next time she looks at my garden. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this conversation makes me feel so old, dude. I have, I have so much wisdom going on right now. But are we fine. gonna like? Are we? Is everyone gonna lose interest in us as we get older? I did. Like, but gonna come boring I, old men. Yeah, I think so. But it's today fine. I mowed the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Today I trimmed my what? magnolia Red, tree. Do you know this one? Do you know this one? Yeah. Why would anyone do drugs when they can just mow their lawn? <laughs> I don't know that, but it's brilliant. <laughs> That's King of the Hill. And if you haven't ever watched that show, you would probably get a right kick out of it. It is hilarious. Dude, I, I just finished the last episode of a series that um, I... You know, like every now and then you discover these little golden nuggets that have somehow disappeared because maybe they came out like in the 2000s late 90s and they just disappeared into the yeah yeah i know what you internet. mean you might have watched this i'm not sure if you have because i've asked some of my british friends and none of them have watched the show before and I, I don't know why but um anyway it was a bbc show that i think started in 98 something like that okay called the royal family oh my god i do remember it but i never watched it oh man I was unbelievably blown away and surprised by its brilliance. Interesting. I, I might write that one down because I feel yeah. like that's something that I like shunned at the time, but maybe I would appreciate it. I can back. see why it was shunned because, I mean, dude, I, I have a feeling that uh, Gervais and Merchant borrowed a lot from the show. Oh, um, okay. For The Office because essentially what the royal family is is kind of like a mockumentary set inside of a typical working class british home so yes and dude that's literally what it is they're on a couch in the house watching the telly and it's like there's a camera that's just watching them and they just talk to each other as if they're just a fat like your family sitting in a tv room talking to each other like they talk about the most mundane stuff as you do when you're just sitting with your family right but interwoven yeah. into this the, the season are all the like super important things that happen to you in life like marriages and births and deaths and all of those like huge events in life that impact families and impact individuals and it's all woven so like intrinsically and realistically into these small interactions that are meaningless but it's it's actually like an incredibly well produced show for 1997 or whatever it was you, you um, found something really deep in it you know? yeah yeah no dude I, I actually had a cry today man in the last episode the last episode made me cry wow. today that's yeah. amazing when stuff moves you like that that's i think it's important to find those moments i mean look i'm gonna say it, it's it hasn't aged well in the pc department as oh as most of the stuff from back then you know like the office for yep. example yikes oh yeah 
I think the office was um, trying to be yikes at the time, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, like some of that stuff, I feel like they're in a way shining a light on it. Like, hey, people accept this. That's know? true. That's true. I think that was a part of Gervais's genius. Um, you know. Yes. But um, but anyway, yeah, it's a, a a great show, and it gave me a great insight into the British family um, structure, also, which is which was very interesting and curious. Mm. I guess yeah, different countries, different cultures. Well, you like know, because I I, I used to, uh, you know, I have I am friends with uh, some British families, and I have spent time with British families during Christmas time and Easter and so on. And there were so many moments while I was watching that show that felt exactly like those moments that I shared with my British family friends. Also, mm. so um, anyway, fascinating. Yeah, <clears throat> I myself I can't think of anything I've. Uh been getting into lately i've been sort of getting out of stuff like i keep not listening to stuff on my phone and just i don't know yeah i'm like, i'm desperately constant... trying to stay away from the phone as much yeah as that constant like wheel of content consumption yeah dude. i've just been like getting off of that a lot lately and it feels good yeah i'm desperately trying but it sucks me back in though you know it's it's horrible surrounded by it's horrible it. i like being here on YouTube, yeah. doing what we do, you see it every day. I think I spoke to you about this before, but um, the way that I force myself to disconnect is to go for uh, about an hour and a half worth of walking every day, and I purposely nice. leave any electronic device at home. That's well. Aren't you tempted to have your phone with you in case of, of course. An emergency? Right? Oh, of course. Yeah, but that's the point. Like you must. It's amazing what happens when you when you just leave everything at home and then walk yeah. for five miles and for the first couple of miles you're panicking because you, you you're <laughs> disconnected and then for the next yeah. couple of miles you're like oh hey you i know you i haven't spoken to you in a while and that you mm. of course is yourself you know and then you kind of reconnect with yourself again for a little bit it's good yeah i had a little bit of that well, actually, no, I don't think I did. I don't know. Like, I, I was in uh, New York last week. Oh, yes. And... New York's awesome, isn't it? It's insane. Oh, my goodness, me! Cool. I, like... I, I, there's this... Like, the city has a myth around it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it has, it has like, this, this myth. And then when you go there, you realize that the myth is true. Yes. <laughs> That's so true. Basically. <laughs> That's yeah. so true. Yeah. But, like, everything was so, like fast paced and we were always doing stuff and then i never had really much of a time to look at my phone for like social media youtube I barely went on my laptop to yep. like do anything mm -hmm. i just had a complete disconnect but like i wasn't alone with myself it was like you're in a totally upside down environment where things are just moving at a different pace mm -hmm. so oh sorry dude sorry <laughs> now we're even <laughs> i'm trying to I'd <laughs> grab my mouse and push, push the button <laughs> Hey, did you have a oh, slice of, a... did you have a slice of joey's pizza i not joey's but i did go every day i ate at a different pizzery oh yeah and i had some classic slices of that pepperoni like oh so good, like, dude. like i could never eat pizza over here again now I know, it dude. would never be anything close we have like until you have a slice of real pie in new york you have no idea what a pizza is supposed to taste like you just don't have any yeah, idea yeah man right yeah this is this is again this is the myth people say it right and then you go there like thinking it's not going to be that but then it's like oh my god how have they made it no. this good dude it's perfect <laughs> did you have the like the the the, the way they do it with that like really thin crunchy um wood-fired base and yep. really thick gooey cheese and then the oh, beautiful yes. like tangy loads of sauce pepper uh, yes yeah. then the sauce yeah that like tangy um acidic sauce that cuts through the cheese and then that beautiful mm. sweet pepperoni on top dude i mean it's like it's magic it's it it's magic i mean it is like 15 dollars also... a slice but still it's magic i found a i found an unconvent like a non-traditional new york pizza place called unregular pizza yeah and on it they put this thing and you know what i forgot the name of it i was supposed to make a note yesterday <laughs> dang it i forgot to look it up basically uh -huh. it was like a mozzarella ball except Ooh. it was filled with cream cheese oh and i did not God. expect it when i 
bit into it and I oh. went, ah! <laughs> had a food gasm. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is too good. Oh, that sounds amazing, dude. Oh, that sounds it's so called good. called Baratta. Thank you, uh, Hero Baratta. Blender, for reminding me of that, yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing, so man. That's amazing. You can buy that and you can slap it on your next slice of pizza. Yeah. Although it won't be as good as New York pizza. So when did you go to New York? Um, I actually, my brother Jono went to study at, at Berkeley Music College in Boston just before, oh, a few years yeah, before it's right lockdown. nearby. And my mum and I took him, went with him to, you know, he didn't want, like, well, he, he was okay to go on his own, but we decided let's go with you, you know, new country, yeah. like, let's go, let's go. So we went to New York a week before he checked into, um, into Berkeley and, and just hung out as a family and did like, you know, the touring, the, the New York stuff. Yeah. We basically just ate, dude. I, I basically just found a list of um, diners, drive-ins, and dives. That show. Oh, that's and, great. I was yeah. sort of doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah and I just chose the ones that, I, that, 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 that look great. And we just went to one of those every day. <laughs> it was awesome. That's awesome, yeah. And we found Joey's Pizza, man. They, Joey's Pizza is just two types of pizza. Uh, mozzarella margarita or pepperoni margarita. Or, you know, mozzarella pepperoni. That's it. Like, that's the smaller choices. the menu, probably a good sign, right? Oh, dude. Like, I was oh, talking God, to my so chat yesterday about this, and we have this theory that food in New York City is like, it's like evolution. It's survival of the fittest. Yeah. If mm -hmm. your food ain't the best, because it's a dense city with 8 million people, yep. you make bad food, you're going to die out quick, right? Yep, yep. So, like, there's a lot of competition, and that's probably why the food is great, because, like, the bagels, the delis, oh, all the God, different types so of food they do. You know, I, yeah. I heard that Indian food was uh, not good in America. Mm -hmm. However, this one little place, it, it was kind of like a dirty back street, not yeah. quite a deli. Yeah. You go in there, there's a guy sitting at the counter, it's all dingy. And I got a sack paneer and chicken tikka masala just a bit of each nice as i was picking nice. stuff of the tray and honestly they tasted great oh, dude, you make you make me so hungry man <laughs> oh that sounds so good oh. it was great the only other city that i've experienced the same sort of food gasms in is uh paris and there's there's a lot about paris that i don't like yeah um but the food is outrageous it's the bread, right? Oh, I mean, the bread. They know how to do bread. The bread is amazing. The cheese is insane. Um, and just the like, just the, the the bakery stuff. So there were two things that I'll never forget. The oh, what are they called? Oh, geez, man, I, stream of brain. What are those little French? They're like little discs, chat. They're very little delicate, discs. like little discs. They look like. Um, I was thinking croissants. No, no, no. Then you said yeah, no, the croissants are like, excellent oh. too, but they're like, um, oh, it's like a, they look like a big, like, like a, a, a fat coin. And there's like um, beautiful cream <laughs> in the coin. middle. Yeah, it's like a big coin. And then cream in the macarons? middle. Macarons? Like, macarons, that's the one. Macron. Dude. They're like a little, like a little burger. You got the yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're a little um, French burger. Exactly. What are they called? Macarons. Uh, you make them with eggs. Macarons. The, the oh, oh, bit yes. on the outside. Meringues. They're meringues. meringues. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. They're um, on the same page. Yeah, I went with my brother. We went on a brotherly um, bonding session in Paris. It's a weird place to go, but anyway. <laughs> uh, and I, we ha we went and found some proper French macaroons. And I've never put anything on the like the sweet side of things in my mouth that caused me so much joy as those macaroons did. Oh my god! Awesome. They were insane. Um, the my, other uh, the other my... thing I remember one last bit of food from me, and then I, and then I'll hand over. We went to like a proper French restaurant. We decided, okay, we're going to find the best restaurant in Paris and or, and try and find the best restaurant in Paris. I mean, there's thousands, so it's it's hard. But we found one that had like super high ratings. And um, I, I said to my brother, okay, we're going to do, we're going to do the, uh, a, a clever tourist thing. We're going to ask the waiter to give us what he would order, right? That, oh, would, that's, that will that's be our genius. order. So this, uh, this lovely French waiter came over, you know, beautifully dressed tuxedo you know looking really prim and proper and um he you know he introduced himself and the menu and everything and then we just looked at him and said look we just want what you if you sat down and had dinner with us right now what would you order we want that <laughs> and don't tell us what it is just go and get it you know just tell, go put the order in and, and and we want to be surprised you know what he brought us did they oblige yeah 
He brought nice. us French onion soup. Ooh. And I promise you, and was it great? <laughs> it, it it's in my top three most insane things I've ever eaten. It was. I can't even describe to you how amazing it was. Like the soup itself you yeah. could taste had been cooked for probably 50 hours. And and it was probably nice. like a, a stock that was being uh, re refilled, you know, like as it got lower, they would add more liquid into it. And and so the the density of flavor, I don't know how to describe it, was just so intense. It would it would make your whole body like shiver every time you put a spoon into your mouth the, the, the flavors were so incredible salty savory beautiful gooey cheese on top with this amazing sweetness from this french onion that you would get every now and then and then of course you had this beautiful strip of toasted homemade french bread that you would dip into that and when you put that soggy bread into your mouth that it sucked up all of those delicious onion juices dude i mean it was just like okay i can die now like this is it i will never eat anything better than this this is the best it was amazing dude it, i mean i it was amazing i i but, know i know i know it's I like mean, every every once in a blue moon you have a meal where it's just like it's too good onion soup dude yeah you'd never think to order it right mm. so good i i really like that attitude i've not really done it myself and i think i should have done it in new york but um i'm just used to like looking at a menu and getting choice paralysis yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just want to be like what would you yeah. order off this menu i ate in this mexican place in new york and i got chimichangas and they were at utterly fantastic like Wait, i don't think i've ever had a chimichanga what is that yeah i, I had no idea i've never seen it on the menu it's, before. Not, it's fun to say it's like a um, chimichanga <laughs> it's like yeah it really is it's like a deep fried burrito i think is the idea like oh. there's all meat and sauce on the inside then the tortilla wrap and then it goes and gets deep fried and then they put oh, loads of like so sour good. cream over the top oh it's so, so it's crunchy and but hot and salty in the middle and then you, you got some coolness from the sour cream that yeah. cuts through all of that salt oh dude that yeah it's really good that sounds insanely good I'd, I'd ram a couple chimichangas into my face right now dude i'm not gonna lie yeah it filled me up though like I, I don't ever really feel full after I've eaten, but like I was getting near the end of that and I was just like, oh, my belly is sending me signals. Like, I'm loving this, but I feel full. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, good. last year I went on a mission to learn how to uh, cook Japanese food, um, mostly because Ooh. I was intrigued to discover if I would enjoy very plain food. And and when I say plain, I don't, I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean that, um, you know, Japanese... Brent? Yes. My chat is about to go wild because I, my friend, I, I can't wait to hear your reaction to this. I boil my chicken and then eat it. <laughs> We've spoken about this before. <laughs> oh, we have. Okay. Okay. Listen, I mate, mean, uh, like, that's simplicity on another level. Yeah. Um, like, chat goes wild whenever I bring that one up. I, I literally did it today. I cooked a dish and I was just like, how am I going to cook this chicken? I'll boil it. <laughs> <laughs> I did take the mick out of you for it, but only because I was jumping on the bandwagon. But but in fairness, uh, having spent a, a few months really learning how to to um, cook Japanese food, I have a, a, a newfound respect for just respecting the taste of the ingredient and just enhancing the taste with a bit of salt and seasoning. And that's it. Mm. Like, for some reason in the West, we chicken already tastes delicious, right? on yep. its own it tastes delicious why smother it with other stuff dude you're talking to a guy who makes salads with no seasoning <laughs> like i have been eating plain food for yeah. quite some time and yeah you can totally appreciate yeah. the taste but you have to adjust yeah because you you're used you to it yeah so once you stop having all the extra you know sugary yep. bits and flavoring then all of a sudden those raw vegetables yep, their yep. flavors start to come through more you know i mean that's what i learned a lot when i with uh, with japanese cooking you know because you get yourself a proper rice maker and some proper japanese rice and uh it's it tastes like rice you've never tasted before it's incredible it has its own flavor i, I actually have right? um like sushi rice yes and you make it by like soaking the rice for a yes. long time and washing yep. it a lot right yeah and then you have to cook it with a very precise sort of time so it doesn't stick it's a lot of work yeah 
but it has its own it's flavor. Good. It's nutty, right? It has like a, a deep, mm. rich, nutty flavor to it. You don't want to chuck a bunch of gravy on that. The rice itself tastes amazing, you know? Yeah. But what the Japanese do, of course, is they use a little bit of, uh, uh, they'll, they'll, you know, like teriyaki is what we know uh, in the West is like the bottle of teriyaki that we get. But really what teriyaki is, is a bit of soy, a bit of miso, a bit of miso, um, mm, miso, uh, yeah. miso like uh, then a couple of different alcohols, like white rice vinegar and uh, not vinegar, white rice I've been rice cooking with all these wine. things you're mentioning. Yeah. Have you used um? It's called sh shaoxing wine or something yes, like yeah, that. Yes, yeah, exactly. And yes, all of these I use things that are stuff in the rice. It, it it's just to enhance the flavor because it gives you some salt and some sugar and some umami, right? And that just brings yeah. out the natural flavor of the of the ingredient. It doesn't add more flavor to it. It just you're tasting what the thing actually is. So I have a, I have a lot more respect for your boiled chicken, X. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know what? I would say you're making me hungry with all this food talk, but I feel hungry 24-7, so I just... I'm oh, used man. to this. I'm, I'm very hungry right now, dude. I've still got to stream for another couple hours. Dang it. <laughs> I'll have to send my uh, peeps <laughs> over to you when I'm done. All right. Keep keep the, the hermit craft fun rolling. Yes. All right, X. Well, listen. Uh, I, I, let's go do something else for a bit. Is there any 1.20 stuff you need to do? No, I'm just... I need to fix a road. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just doing some grinding. You put the like, helmet on with such a plonk. Road? Just like plonk. Makes that sound, doesn't it? Uh, I'm I'm working on a new shop, and um, Ooh. I was just laying down the foundations today, and uh, unfortunately, doesn't really match up with the road very well. You know what? You just you give me a little bit of a thought. Like, is it the roads in this area? No, no, no. Come this away. I will show you. Okay. okay. Oh, there's all sorts of new shops and stuff around here now, isn't there? Yeah. 1.20. I got to check it out properly yeah. at some point. So I got I got planning permission from uh, B Double O and Scar to build a shop here. Nice. But I'm not I'm not. Well, every my viewers know what it is. It's going to be Boom, Boombox Records. Oh, sweet. Yeah, it's going to be a record shop. A record here. store. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but over here, I don't know who actually built this road. It's probably Joe, because I think Joe did a bunch of roading. Um, as you as you can see, we've got a big dip here, but Boombox Records is going to have an entrance entryway here. So yeah. the road is all the way down there, entry all the way up here. So I'm thinking like I'm seeing an opportunity, not a problem. All right, go. I'm on. seeing an opportunity for a little bit of architecture. Yeah. Your your entrance now extends itself over to roughly where I'm standing here, yeah. and then a staircase on either side rolls down and connect with um, either side of the existing road, right? Ooh. And then you can put in, you know, a couple of arcs and maybe a, a roof over the top of the road up there and really give it a bit of, like, structure and size and make it something a little more interesting. That is a very curious idea because I was just going to raise the whole road up to this level here, mm. you know, but then you lose this, like, beautiful undulation here, you know? Yeah. Like, everything being flat and uniform, I, I don't think looks so good. I actually like that this road sort of bubbles up and down a little bit. That is very Dang. interesting, that suggestion. I mean, another thing, you've just got me thinking, dude. Like, another thing that could be done is the entrance could be here. Yeah. Right? And then you could go up and, in, and you know, through the basement up into the shop floor as well. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Embrace it. It's one of those common things um, with Minecraft is that you see things as a problem, and I think when you try and think in terms of solution, it allows you to like, yeah, kind of like keep something that already exists. That is as opposed to like redo redoing things. Yeah, that has actually got my brain ticking over X. I like that. Like, there's two options here. I kind of do dig your idea of like, um, someone in my chat said a grand staircase here. That's actually kind yeah. of cool. It would sort of it is, loop yeah. around here. You can here. do it either way. Your idea is just as great. I think the best thing is to hmm. like look at this thing you think is a problem and see it as a challenge. You know, because yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now you've gone from like, oh no, the road is at the different height to like, how can I connect this to that? And hmm. then that's the opportunity. It's like now you get to flex your building skills a little, 
or make something that looks interesting. Yes, indeed. I'm loving this, man. I'm loving this. You got my creative juices cooking. <laughs> you know, these builds, like, uh, we spend so much time designing them, like, in creative, and then, yeah. you know, it's ready to build on the server, and you don't, that's, like, kind of where the creativity stops, like, when you bring it over to the server, okay, and I'll just build it exactly how I did in creative, and, you know, yep. like, you know, back in the day, remember, in season four, Logfellas times, man, we used to just kind of build on the fly back then many times, you know, there yep. were some big builds, like the Hogwarts place that we designed off camera and whatnot, but a lot of our builds we maybe, just maybe maybe trying built. to like give yourself that each time so like yeah hey i'm gonna do this but then on the fly i'm gonna build a flower bed around the back here yeah you know i don't know what you got planned for here but like maybe you look at this space and then you think let's put in a flower bed and i won't design that in creative i'll just do that all in yeah yeah, Bible, yeah right yeah get a yeah. bit of both mixed in yeah yeah bro papa x so man, what's gonna be uh in, in sorry Papa X speaking the truth, man. <laughs> I try my best. Um, in, in Boombox Records, I'm, I'm guessing you're selling all the records, right? Yeah, we've got an insane record farm uh, over at my base. That's a... Uh, that, <laughs> that's helped me out, by the way, with the Evil X thing. Oh, yeah, 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 cool. Well, I remade it, uh, remade Zed's version into like a much friendlier, nicer farm. So now it's like really oh, easy cool. to farm. Um, that's sweet. But I still need to get like a bunch of the harder to get records, like the ancient like city side records and relic and... now as well. Yeah, yeah. So yep. I still need to hunt down some of those. But all the creeper fun. records we have like already, you know, three double chests of each. So we got more records speaking, than we ever need. Speaking of music and records, have you had the chance to listen to my record yet? Dude, I have. What did you think? I haven't. I haven't had enough spins yet for a. Oh, you're like you're you... like me. You really want yeah. to get into the yeah, yeah, music. Yeah, I, I, oh, yeah. I need a couple more spins cool. before I can give you a proper a proper rundown. Nice. All right, give me a couple. I'm more looking weeks. forward to hearing. Give me a couple more weeks. Like, uh, yeah, man. Like, what what, what I know, will say you right love off it, the you bat, hate it, I I don't care. Right just, off the bat, I'm so glad it's out there. I can give you yeah. one bit of of feedback. The guitar tone, French <laughs> chef's kiss, dude. Oh man, dude. The guy the guy who I hired to make that record. Like, we had a lot of back and forth talking about, you know, all the different instruments, how they're supposed to sound and stuff. Because I just gave him my MIDI demos. Do you remember writing music in MIDI? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, you showed I had some this of great some fear. I had this great fear where it was like, I can hear how these songs sound as metal, but I'm not sure if other people will. And yeah. this guy like understood it and picked out the right tones for everything and like the whole thing just came mm. together brilliant. No, that so, tone's uh, beautiful, dude. It's got a bit of deafies it really in is it. Good. Like a little bit of deaf tones, but with a bit of crunch. It's a really nice tone. Really nice. Yeah. Mm hmm It's awesome. It made me really appreciate like what that is as well, because you know, maybe yeah. stuff's a little easier today, but when I tried doing it like twelve years ago and I was yeah. recording like my amp with a dodgy microphone and stuff like it was really hard to make guitar sound oh, like man. it did when you're playing it in your room on a record it was yeah, just it like madness to get that tone these days the software does all the work for you but you know back in back in those days i mean St steph Carpenter was like working with analog pedals and even the yeah. cables that you use changes the influence tone influence the sound yeah. so it's like you know to find that perfect deaf ease tone imagine how long dude he must have spent like thousands of hours in different configurations amplifiers cables yeah. um pickups like strings picks oh, yeah, even like pickups everything dude it. everything i mean that's why like i only really started to appreciate uh why people say that Jimi hendrix is a genius because i never really understood it i'm not like that into hendrix you know I love listening to the music, but uh, you know, like it, to me, it doesn't. I'm, I'm, I don't know where the impression, the, the impressiveness is, until my brother I, started I think... to tell me about the fact that he was one of the first that really started to warp the hardware, fiddle with the bits, and and change the sound of amplifiers and guitars. And that's where his genius was, like, was in that tinkering, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, like, if you listen to Jimi Hendrix in a playlist of songs of the same year they really stand out yeah like like mm. it, i don't connect with it massively but what really makes it like makes me understand it is when you hear what else was going on mm -hmm. at the same time mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you're like okay this person is clearly like, like taking a big leap yep in a new direction yep yep exactly man so exactly cool. 
And um, yeah, my brother put me on to the, the making of Dark Side of the Moon. Did you ever watch that documentary? I think I did. That's a awesome oh, fascinating record. man. I, I mean, probably one of my favorite records as, as the favorite of billions of people. I mean, you know, still the number one top selling record every year. I mean, it's outrageous. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it always stays in the charts, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just crazy. Um, but there's one particular, and obviously the song eludes me now because we're streaming. But um, the the song with that incredible female vocal in it. Do you oh, I love that it. one. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that song? Oh, come on, Chad, you know the song. It's um... that song blatantly influenced that Deftones song. Oh yeah. Oh, um, dude. Knife party is Knife it? Knife party. Hundred percent. Like, like. Yeah. Hundred percent. Great gig in the sky. Great gig in the sky. That's the one. Anyway, the, the, in the documentary, they go through the recording of that moment, and it's just it's it's unbelievable because I, I believe it was like uh, they didn't take do very many takes of it. In fact, I think maybe if I remember correctly, it was the first or the second take that they did, and she just uh, came in and nailed it. And I think I, I think she didn't like it, or she thought that she'd done really badly. Like she did the take, and then she she went to the band and said, "Oh, that was terrible." And they're like, "What are you talking about? That was like." godlike what yeah. you just did was godlike like we it's we cannot replicate what just happened like that is going on the record for history you did something that cannot ever be redone and that's how i feel that. when i listen to it man like when i hear that 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 woman singing it it rips my soul into shreds it's amazing it's a beautiful moment isn't oh, it oh it's so good dude. what's your favorite song on the album um Dude, that's it's so hard because for me the whole album is like a song, right? I mean, it is it is literally one big song. For me, it's always any color you like. Yeah, that that is good. Comfort that that intro is so trippy and late. It feels mm. like three D sound, like the the keyboard notes are oh, just like so good. going in dimensions and directions you can't. Fathom. And and it's to so think good. the way they made those noises was, you know, they were warping wires and stuff inside of like amplifier boxes to like make these sounds. You know, they didn't have like yeah, a, a yeah. bit of software to like make the the wool, 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 wools and stuff. Like they had to do it through <laughs> wires. Sound a little bit like Skrillex then. <laughs> um, I think Comfortably Numb is probably wool, 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 wool. probably one of my favorites, if not my That's favorite a from the song too. Yeah. To to me, it sounds like I I don't know I don't know man. It sounds like the moment when your time here comes to an end and you realize how incredible it was and you just are so elated with the fact that you got a chance to do this and then you just go that's what it feels like mm. to me it's beautiful like a really beautiful moment uh, that we will all experience you know that final moment that's that's what it captures for me um Dude, I'm going to have to listen to that album tonight now. I need to listen now. to that song again. <laughs> yeah. Got to put these things back on the playlist. <laughs> I used to listen to those records, like, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, X. <laughs> oh. I got lots... a pleasure hanging out, my dude. Yeah, dude, I got a lot of <laughs> notifications to catch up with. So, uh... Same here. I guess we'll have to get back to our uh, isolated hermit activities. Yes. Yes, but thank you for a, a wonderful Friday evening chat, man. We shall let's make this a regular occurrence. We we need another coffee oh, shop, I man. Know that. We had a coffee shop in coffee season shop. seven. We need a new coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, we could have like coffee streams where you sit with your cup of coffee and have a chat. Bro, that do you remember cool. we spoke to to Scar for about two and a half hours about Star Wars in that coffee shop? Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> you remember? I do. Yes. Yeah. Oh man, good times. The coffee shop. <laughs> The Mud Cafe was what it was Yeah, called, the Mud right? Cafe, that's it. Wait, awesome. B-Dubs has a cafe? Oh yeah, B-Dubs does have a new cafe. Alright, our, our next our next long uh, conversation of twaddle will happen in B-Dubs' um, cafe. Sounds good. Alright. <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> Alright, Ren. <laughs> Take care, my dude. You too, dude. I'm going to fly off into the distance. Right, Thanks we'll, for the we'll, chat. We'll watch you. Dramatic fly away. Here we go. Bye-bye. Don't fail to fly. There we go. Professional. Um. Oh yeah, we we're supposed to be playing Minecraft, weren't we, guys? Hmm. Thank you so very much, everybody, for all of the ring a ding a ling a hootin tootin scootins that's been going on while X and I have been rabbiting away. Thank you so much. Um. 
Supper, thank you for the bitty. Zach Attack with a 37 month mini OG resub. Hey, Zach, welcome back, my friend. Three months to OG, dude. Amazing. Uh, Star274, the 23 months in a row. You've been, to the, you've been to the clubs on Dogcraft. That is true. I have been to a couple of clubs on my fan server, uh, and they were magical times. Magical. Thank you, Star, uh, for the 23 months. We've got Greystone83 with the five months, and Daisy with some biddies. Hey, Daisy, thank you so much. And Proud Looney here with the biddies also. Love the deep talk. Well, I don't know if it was... I think it was more more like deep twaddle than deep talk, but I appreciate that, my friend. Cherry! Hey, Cherry, what's happening, baby? Nice to see you. Thank you so much for the party raid. Were you, what, what, are you, what were you doing, Cherry? Were you drawing... Were you drawing something awesome? No doubt. And uh, my beautiful little brother is here also, guys. 39-month OG resub also for Jono. And um, hey, Jono, what's up, man? Dude, I need, to, I need to call you sometime. I'm going to call you this week, okay? We need to catch up, man. I've been hella busy doing things and stuff. But new episode coming out very, very shortly this weekend. And once that's done, man, then we'll give you a, a ring-a-ding-ding. Um, anyway, hey, Dutch Soccer is also here. Hey, guys, what's happening, man? Welcome, guys, welcome. Yeah, that was, this is a podcast stream tonight, guys. Uh, I, I, it feels like this, what our stream is becoming, right? It feels like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, friends, but ch Twaddle Tuesdays, right? So Tuesdays, we just talk Twaddle. Friday podcast day. Eh, it doesn't have a ring to it. F Fri Friday chat, uh, chat, Friday chats, Fwaddle Fridays. <laughs> Come on, guys, we we need a name. We need a proper name for Fridays where we we go and talk to a hermit for an hour. Fodcast. <laughs> that sounds uh, twaddlerific. I'm afraid. Freestyle Friday. Friday chit chat. Friday chat yay. <laughs> Fireside Friday. Now we're now we're talking. Fireside Friday. Now we're talking. Feel good Friday. We're going back to like 1960s radio here, guys. Welcome to uh, 96.4 Hermitcraft Radio. Ren Diggity Doll coming here. Coming. Ren Diggity Doll coming at you this very fine Friday. Fireside Chat Day. Next up after these uh, messages from our sponsors, Azuma. Grand Pappy of Hermacraft is coming in to talk to us here on Radio Hermacraft Z147-4. FM. <laughs> Faffy, Faffy Friday. <laughs> Friendly Fridays. The Friday mixtape. Nice. Listen, people, we, I mean, we've got some work to do, okay? As you can see, I have been... Sorry, distracted. <laughs> Today I've been working on uh, the foundations for Boombox Records. It's going to go over here. This to me is a wonderful location. Um, and I'm very, very excited to build here. I must say, I feel honored to, uh, to build in between my two favorite builders. Or at least two of my favorite Minecraft builders in all the world, B00 and Good Times with Scar. Um, you know, they're such fantastic, amazing builders. And I hope that we can do our version of Boombox Records justice here. I've had some incredible help from some of our builders, Old Man and Lunar, and they have been helping me out with an amazing design for Boombox Records. Uh, did I show you guys Boombox Records last time? I mean, it's a bit of a exclusive spoiler, to be fair. Um, because it's not finished yet. Maybe, you know what, I'm not going to... Maybe I can show you the outside. Hmm. Can I show you... I can, I'll show you the outside of it. I won't show you the inside, though. Uh, because inside is... Inside is where the real magic happens. 
but I'll show you the outside. Oh, you, you're already seeing the inside here. Hold on. Hold on. You saw nothing, people. You saw nothing. So check it out. This is the current design for Boombox Records. And the idea is that it's like a 1960s, 1970s record shop. And uh, I think it, it's turned out really, really nice. The interior is amazing, by the way. Big shout out to Lunar and Old Man for just an amazing job on this. I mean, look at this thing. It's gorgeous. And, you know, if we're going to put a building in between B00 and Scar, it has to be something fabulous, right? I mean, it has to be, like, top-tier build. It can't just be, like, twaddle. It must be excellent. Uh, and and I, I believe that this design is good enough. I mean, look at the roof. Look at this beautiful, like... Like, the asymmetry in this build pleases me so much. And look at the entrance. It's so cool. Uh, but I don't want to show you guys too much. The interior is really, really where the, the build shines. So this is what we're going to be building over there. Uh, in between Scar and B-Dubs' areas. <laughs> They're private areas. And it's going to be fantastic. However, as I explained to Azuma while I was working on the foundations today, unfortunately discovered that um, we're going to have a bit of a road problem. But Azuma has offered like a pretty reasonable um, solution here, I think. Let's just mute ourselves in case we ruin somebody's recording. Um, and I think maybe what we could do is work together to try and figure this out. Like, one of you guys, you guys had this idea of like um, a grand staircase. That sounds pretty cool. There's also like from under in that we could potentially do. And uh, if you can imagine that like that design I showed you, I think it'll fit in quite nicely here because Scars use quite a lot of bone um and white and and quartz in his build and of course the sandstone is quite white-ish and um even uh the the moss building is is diorite and white and stuff so the white of boombox records i think will fit in quite nicely here so i'm not too worried about the block pattern i think it's going to look great um the question is getting into it though this is where one of the entrances is so entrances is is is, is. so we got to figure out a nice a nice way in um and like I say, I was originally just today with you guys going to do some infrastructure work here. Just flatten this road. But I think that'll take some of the pizzazz out of this area. You know, like these undulating roads are actually kind of sweet. Um, I also want to connect up the back here. Um, Scar did start, it looks like it, like building the road over here. So maybe this is where we can begin things today, guys. Why don't we start? I wanted to connect here. Um, a, a, like... I want a tarmac through here and then another bit of tarmac and um, granite coming through here. So let's do that to kick things off, right? Let's get our uh, building juices flowing, friends. And uh, we'll see what's happening uh, up in the chat today, man. You guys doing all right? Did everybody have a decent week? Hope you guys um, are feeling okay wherever you are in the world. And if you're not feeling okay, well... Sit back and relax with the rendigated dog and the beautiful cyber dog from all over the world. Man, we're chilling today, people. It's Friday, okay? We got cups of tea in Mandalorian cups. Life couldn't be better. Everything's fine. You guys have had a great week? Excellent. That's good to see, man. That's what I like to see. I like to see you guys having a good week. I mean, you know, having a good week isn't compulsory. You're also allowed to have a bad week. It's also okay. Having a good week is preferable, though, to having a bad week. Let's get some granite and some deep slate. And let's place, out, let's place some blocks down, friends. Let's, let's do some mining and some crafting, shall we? Doofus says it's been better than the last few weeks. Excellent. That's an upwards trajectory, my friend. What more could you ask for? Zero says, how's it, Ren? How's it, my bro? We got South Africans in the house, eh? Yo! I think we might be chilling a bit more than you. <laughs> How's it, Zero? Bro, you don't know anything. I had a bride today, bro. <laughs> what do you think about that? I know it's winter in Cape Town, eh? Yo, yo's aren't brying right now. I had a bride today. Mm. You have a bride? No, no. I had a bride today. I had a proper South African bride, bro. Proper. It was, it was awesome. I even had all gold, man. I had all gold today. Got it from the South African shop. Alex Cat, what's up, my dude? Thank you very much for the, <laughs> the kind words. Oh, I do love the South Africans in chat, man. I love seeing you guys. 
Missed you guys, man. Missed you guys. Stark's playing on Dogcraft right now. You love to see it. Nice one, Starky. Hope you're having a good time on our fan server. Your bry spot is covered? Yeah, because it's winter, eh? Can't brine the winter. I mean, in England, we brine the winter, though, because, you know, we want to bry as much as possible when you move here. <laughs> so, doesn't matter what time of year it is, we are brying. We are brying. Actually, you know what? We don't want to go... I don't think we want to uh, dip the road here. I think we want to bring the road up here. Right? Because it's going to go too low. I think, yeah, I think we want the tarmac to be like, um, like this, on this level, like this. And then what we can do is we can bring the road up here. Like maybe here somewhere. So let's get some of these slabs and we can do some terraforming there. Scree says, how's it, Ren? Love from Joburg. How's it, Oaks? How's it, Joburg, Oaks? I used to live in Craig Hall, eh? In, in Joburg? Yeah, man. I used to spend a lot of time at the colony. Because uh, the colony used to have a, a, a magic shop there. I don't know if it's still there. It was called, like, uh, Wizards of the Colony or something. And I used to go play magic there on the weekends when I was a kid. Used to go to Santon for, uh, for movies back in the day. How's it, Joburg Oaks? Nice to see you, man. Nice to see you. <laughs> oh, you'll love to see the South Africans, man. You'll love to see the South Africans. Let's just do a bit of sleeping here, friends. Uh, is Afrikaans just n not just simplified Dutch? Well, the, the root language of Afrikaans is Dutch. So, um, I wouldn't call it simplified. I would call it enhanced. So, basically, what Afrikaans did was take all of the complex unnecessary ancient rules out of dutch and uh, made it a much easier and more modern language in fact i i believe afrikaans might be the youngest language or one of the youngest languages in existence and so it's actually um very it's very much studied by linguists because in a way it's a, a more perfect language than the older languages it's also a wonderful language to speak and a wonderful language to swear in. Muni for me ma seni, ne? Nia, Nia. We can't swear in Afrikaans, guys. I'm very tempted, but we can't do it. We'll get into trouble. Swearing is swearing. Ma, jelle weet wat ek wil sê, ne? Zuid-Afrikaners, jullie weet wat ik wil sê. Maar ik kan niet dit sê nie. Ons sal uh, demonetized wees. <laughs> oh, jyre. Anyway, uh, let's get some, let's get some, uh, let's get some slams going here, friends. Uh, my Afrikaans is terrible, by the way. I do apologize, um, Afrikaans speakers. I'm not a native uh, tongue Afrikaans speaker. My ma's Afrikaans, my oma was Afrikaans, maar ek het nie Afrikaans by die huis gepraat nie. Ek het Afrikaans by school geleer. Dan, so ek kan a bieke Afrikaans praat, maar ek kan nie oefen um Ek kan nie oefen hier, ek kan nie oefen in Engeland nie. Daar is niemand om met, om wie ek kan, daar is niemand met wie te praat nie. Jeez, I don't even know if I'm speaking Afrikaans right now. I'm trying, I'm desperately trying. But yeah, anyway. My first language is English. The Queen's English is my first language, dear friends. As as jy Nederlands is, dan kan jy my verstaan. Maar as ek Afrikaans is, kan ek jou nie verstaan nie. Nederlands is baie, het is te veel vir my te te verstaan. Sorry guys, so basically what I'm saying is, so because Afrikaans is a derivative of Dutch, Dutch people can understand Afrikaans very well, but Afrikaans speakers struggle a little bit to understand Dutch because Dutch is a, a bit more of a complicated language but I think if you speak Dutch slowly I can get it I can understand you
Sounds a bit like Russian. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, all the beautiful duchies in chat should uh, should have been able to understand me. Hi, duchies. <laughs> I am actually Dutch, by the way. Uh, my my heritage, because of course South Africa is a country that was first colonized by the Dutch and then was colonized by the British, and uh, my family family lineage comes from the Dutch side of things. So my grandparents were Dutch, and they actually moved over to South Africa at the end of the war, uh, World War Two, because my grandfather was a prisoner of war. Uh, in fact, he was captured in the first year of the war breaking out and uh, spent most of the war in a, in a prisoner of war camp in um, in Belgium, I think. Or in, in sort of northern France somewhere, I don't know. Uh, not ex entirely sure on the history. Never really wanted to talk about it. Um, but yeah, pretty much uh, as... I mean, can you not see... Look, I mean, is this not the Dutchest face you've ever seen? When I go to Holland, I, I see my people. I'm like, oh, there's me. You know? I mean, look at this. We've got the Neanderthal forehead, right? The Look at this. The Neanderthal schnoz. The Viking Neanderthal um, chin. You know? Got those deep-set, dark-bagged eyes. I mean, I'm as Dutch as the, I'm as Dutch as it comes, people. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm a I'm a perfectly Dutch specimen. I don't have eyebrows, you know. The Dutch don't have eyebrows. <laughs> that's a, that's a claim I cannot back up. By the by the way, but um, anyway, my eyes are because I'm a gamer. Exactly. That's what I tell myself every day. Mhm. Mm exactly. Gamer eyes. <laughs> this is great background noise <laughs> to play my SMP on. Nice. That's that's what I've become, guys. Just background noise. You hate to see it, really. You really do. You know, I put the webcam on so that you ladies and you gentlemen and you everybody's in betweens can enjoy the visuals. But no, you're just putting it on as background noise. Why do we even have this thing on? We should just turn the damn camera off. Um, anyway, I didn't even know what I was talking about. Yes, big shout out to all of my beautiful South Africans in chat. And, um, I've been noticing a lot more South Africans starting to, uh, to join us. Of course, it's been happening for quite a few years now as, as the internet started to get really good in South Africa. You guys, um, started to be able to, you know, consume content without Telcom charging you, you know, 10,000 Rand a month for your data, right? Now it's a, a lot easier to watch as much YouTube as you want and as much Twitch as you want and stuff. So it's uh, beautiful to see some of my people coming to join us here, guys. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, uh, let's try to figure out what we're doing because I feel like we're making a mess. I feel like the road's going to have to come up here also. Because um, I would like... I'd like the road to be maybe flush with this level here. Like, yeah, I want it to be this level. So I'm thinking this probably needs to go a little bit more in this direction. And then we also need um, some of the the granite lining. So maybe granite lining can go here. I know Scar, like, uh, you can see he sort of put granite lining almost flush with the building, but there's two blocks of grass from the wall of the building to the granite lining so why don't we try and mimic scars um design there right so that'll be two blocks of grass there two blocks of grass here and then can we squeeze two blocks of grass out here that that means it would have to go here like this right and then we could come in like this this is three blocks of grass so we'll come in a little bit more push all of this back and that looks like a spider hole waiting to happen. And that should give us a nice clean granite lining here. Although, I don't know if we can make it as thick as these ones though, right? These ones are like three granites thick. See over here? Like the lining between the, the sidewalk and the road. 
I think this is going to be like a, a, a small road, right? This is like a mini road, like a side... What do you call these? An alleyway? This is an alleyway, right? So it can be thinner, I suppose. Peter Paul with some biddies. Hey, Peter, my friend. How's it cracking? Greetings from the from the dogs at ModCraft. Hey, ModCraft dogs. <laughs> nice to see you guys, man. Big shout out to everybody on DogCraft tonight, man. What's happening, guys? Of course, DogCraft is our community server. And uh, if you've ever wondered what it's like to play Minecraft like us hermits do with other human beings, you know, you can play Minecraft on your own, which is great, but you can also play Minecraft with other people, believe it or not. Uh, well, most of us hermits have like fan servers, a lot of them have Patreon servers and things like that. So you can pretty much choose your favorite hermit and go and join their server. Um, we have our own server, of course. It's 100% free. There's n there's no secret payments that you have to make. No mini transactions, nothing like that. It is just free uh, for Raindog fans to join. It's called Dogcraft. You've got to be 13 years or older to join. It's a very mature, very established community. It's been going for over a decade. And uh, it's a wonderful place to, to experience multiplayer Minecraft for the first time. Make some new friends, build some stuff, and have a great time. Uh, go check it out. If you need any information about it, just ask any of these people that are chatting. Where are they? This side. Uh, they're on Dogcraft right now, chilling, just playing Minecraft. Uh, the server's there for you guys to enjoy, man. 13 years or older? Go check it out. Java Minecraft only, though. Anyway, quick plug for the server. You know, we got, we got to do what we got to do, my friends. My friends, we got a party raid coming in with the beautiful Azuma arriving. Hey, Azuma, what's happening, my friend? Hello, everybody from X's stream and my stream. I mean, we were all streaming together, weren't we? we were, it was pretty much a dual. We were dual streaming. The log fellas back together once again. Oh, you love to see it, my friends. Back at it again. Although the last time we were we were log fellas together, Azuma, there was there was less wisdom in my hair. This is the color of wisdom that I was telling you about, you see. There was less back then. Now there's more. Had to get rid of my glorious beard. Because there was quite a lot of wisdom in the beard. So, now we're back to clean-shaved Ren. I also, you know, the eyebrows are going the color of wisdom. So I look like I don't have any eyebrows. So before anybody asks, I do have eyebrows. Okay? They're there. They're just... On holiday. Welcome, X-rays, to the stream. <laughs> thank you for the raid, X, and thank you for the chat earlier. That was uh, that was great. <laughs> uh, we're currently working on some infrastructure here, um, X-rays. Um, just working on a new section of road to connect up. I, I basically just want to surround the Boombox Records foundations with some roads before I do anything else. Just to you know, give me some inspiration as to what we might do at this entry point. And um, that's basically what we're working on. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. We be chilling. Neon says, I'm rather jelly that you uh, that you grade on the sides more than the top. I always considered that a good look, but I started at the, at the top front. Yeah, I mean, geez, you know, you, it'd be nice if we could choose, right? <laughs> Just like choose a... Yeah, can I have some here and then a little bit over here? And then maybe a little bit over there. Yeah. Fortunately, you can't choose it, man. Hey, listen, it's all good. Nothing you can do about it, and um, you just got to embrace it, you know? Embrace the wisdom, man. It's great. I think it's awesome. It shows that we've had long, fruitful lives. We've worked really hard, and um, they're the road marks in our uh, glorious lives, just on our heads. Thank you, Annabelle. <laughs> it's kind of you to say thank you. All right, uh, let's have a look. How's this looking? You know what? Like, we can make this road a little bit more interesting, I think. Let's... This doesn't have to be completely squared off like this. You know, Scar's done a bit of things and stuffs here, so why don't we do the same? We'll make this have, like, a little... A little ziggy zag or something. Like so. And... A little bit of this action. Whoops. I hear a Zombert. Do you guys hear uh, Mr. Bertie? He's he's sad somewhere. Let's find him. He's a lag. Look at this. This is hmm. This is a lag generator. If I ever did see one. Uh, zombie, where you at, dude? Where you at? 
We gotta try to make sure we clear out the zombies, right? Ooh, is he in here? Oh, snappers. Uh oh. Scar! Uh, Scar? Is he online? He's not online. Scar has left a little area here to spawn mobs. You're supposed to be a professional. This is outrageous. Hold on. Where's it at? Here we go. We must keep the mob count in the shopping area down as much as possible, people, or this place will lag and die. A horrible, miserable death. Right, we need to remember what this looks like, though. Hold on. Let's just do some dumpage. And we're going to have to dig in here and then rebuild. Should be fine, though. Oh, hello there. Sheesh. All right. <laughs> well, that zombie got wrecked, man. Gee, Skellington. This Skellington is angry. All right, let's give him a chop. Um, hello. Where you at, bro? Hi. <laughs> wrecked. All right, let's just fill this. In. Oh. You hate to see it. You really do. You hate to see it. Oh, what, what are we going to do with our beautiful friend Scar, hey? What are we going to do with them? Alright, let's see. Can we rebuild this thing? It was like a so, and... Like this and like a this. Okay, there we go. All good. Name under re renovation says I meant to start a twaddle count in the next the next stream I caught, but I I, I but I'm a good ninety six minutes late. <laughs> I mean, there was a decent amount of twaddle that was spoken. I'm not gonna lie, Azuma and I got together and spoke. Well, we mostly spoke about food, didn't we? It's not the it's not the worst thing to to talk about. And we were talking we were speaking about French onion soup. I mean, there you know there's Jono. It's pretty twaddleicious. <laughs> Twaddles for Tuesdays only, people. It's supposed to be Tuesday twaddle. Goodness. In a shocking turn of events, Scar made an unintentional mob farm. Shocking. I can't believe it. First time ever. <laughs> right, we might have a little problem here, friends. Um, we're kind of running out of space here, and if we're going to have a path in between the buildings, I kind of want the path to be three blocks wide, right? Because if we're going to do a lining of granite here, like this, um, hmm, maybe it can just be two and then open up to three, because it does sort of expand a bit here. Yeah, maybe we just do it like that, right? It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical all the time. In fact, asymmetry in Minecraft is what um, encourages the eye to see realism, right? Because real life is not symmetrical. This is a very amazing Minecraft lesson that B00 taught me. That kind of blew my mind when he, when he told me about it. I was like, man, that makes so much sense. He was like, dude, life is not symmetrical, so... That's why super symmetrical builds in Minecraft don't really feel that realistic. Because your brain is, you know, is not used to seeing, like, perfect symmetry. Makes so much sense, right? Like, how insane, like, what an incredible insight. What an incredible insight. It, and it just makes so much sense. It's amazing. That French onion soup, Deborah, was, oh, I promise you. I've, I've never tasted such depth of flavor in all my life. I, I, it was, I couldn't believe that such a depth of flavor could be obtained from soup. From onion soup, no less. I mean, look, I, I love a, a good onion more than, the, more than most. You know, I'm an onion fan. But I never did think that an onion could blow my mind. The way that it blew my mind that, uh, that very day. Can we get a ding on the twaddle counter, please? <clears throat> Dude, dudes, we need a twaddle. We need a twaddle sound. <laughs> we need a twaddle noise. 
What would a twat do? If we added like a sound, you know, like we have our alarm, we have our horn. What would a, a twaddle noise sound like? Uh, by the way, Robblecop, thank you for the biddies, my friend. You're rending in a dog, stay awesome. Thank you, dude. You too, man, you too. <laughs> a slide whistle? What, that like... <laughs> that thing? <laughs> that... Mm. That's actually a very clever suggestion because the slide whistle... The slide whistle is the naughtiest of all the whistles, isn't it? Can really only mean one thing, let's be real. <laughs> Bunch of chickens? I mean, it kind of works, I guess. Yeah, ben <laughs> Benny Hill noise. <laughs> An old time car horn. A hoonga! <laughs> That's a good one. You know what's disturbing is that I can make these noises quite well. That's that's kind of disturbing me, not gonna lie. A hooga! If uh, if my Minecraft career ever comes to an end, I'm gonna I want to get into sound effects. I think I've told John and my brother about this before. Like, my next career will be um, voice acting, but but very specific voice acting. Okay, I want to voice act for fighting dying or sickly fantasy beasts only so for example if i was an orc and i got hit in the face with a sword uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you know like those noises I, that, that's what I want to do. I just want to make those noises. <laughs> like, isn't that, doesn't that sound like the funnest job in the world? Just to make noises? <laughs> oh man, I'd love it so much. Oh, it would bring me much joy. <laughs> My apologies to all uh, headphone wearers right now. Sorry, guys. Right, um, we got a problem. This all needs to be raised by one, right? Because we're missing the uh, this little step here. This is like kind of ugly, right? I'm thinking, okay, hold on. I have a solution for this. Maybe this is all slabs. This the the alleyways are slabs, and that'll give the illusion of granite slabs also like lining the alleyway <laughs> how's that for background background noise deborah i think an old-timey wolf whistle like when you see someone attractive but like <laughs> listen we don't want to, we don't want to make the twaddle too obvious, because then we'll, we'll get demonetized. Jaeger, my friend, thank you so very much for yet another tip. You've been so generous to me this week. Thank you, Jaeger. Do you ever think we'll see your mad Star Wars nerd run wild in the server again? Who knows? Potentially, you know, I, I very much enjoyed our Star Wars builds, I must say. Um, it was some of the funnest things that I ever did, man. They were really good. Uh, yo, Reto, thank you for the party raid, my friend. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. The meme snoring noise. <laughs> Dudes, what about a Wookiee noise? <clears throat> wait, wait. Does, um, does Epidemic Sound have any Wookiee noises? <laughs> We, we can only use uh, epidemic sound sound effects because I have a license with them. So, <laughs> give me one second. Let's see if they got any Wookiee noises. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta have Wookiee noises. That's our noise, dudes. That's that's our noise. <laughs> <laughs> 
If we can get a Wookiee noise, that's got to be the noise. Surely. They don't have Wookiee noises. Wait, sound effects. No sound effects Wookiee noises. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to buy a license for a Wookiee noise then. Hold on. Uh, let's head over to Audio Jungle. Let's see if we can. Uh... We're doing this live. We're doing this live, people. Okay, we're doing this live. Welcome to the most professional stream on Twitch, where we uh, add things into our overlays and whatnot live. Um, Wookie. Wookie. We're now at Audio Jungle. Let's have a look. Wookie. Um... Audio Jungle. That, that's, that's not a Wookie. Um... <laughs> I, like Disney is so incredibly aggressive with copywriting. Like I don't think we will will find a Wookie noise that we can buy a license for. Audio jungle. <laughs> <laughs> this particular SFX is called fluttering elephant like call. Audio jungle. <laughs> That is a ridiculous noise. Hold on, here's another one. Audio jungle. <laughs> that one's really aggressive. Oh man. Another one? Audio jungle. <laughs> that one had a bit of urgency in it. Um, you guys are saying camel. All right, let's search for camel. Oh, this is going to hurt me. This is this is definitely going to hurt me. All right, first result. <laughs> wow. Second result. <laughs> that's the one, guys. That's the one. Oh, that's the one. Oh, goodness. Raiseworks, thank you very much for the raid. We're, we're currently looking for a sound effect to um, signify twaddle. So, welcome to the... Welcome to the stream. Let's just make sure that when it's not night time. Okay, everything's fine. Uh, this is the one, guys. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate it, dude. S sit back and relax, everybody. Meridian, thank you for the 66 month OG resub. Hey, Ren and crew. Hope everyone's having a nice day. <laughs> okay, listen to this. The first, the first one of this, okay? It's nice and quick, but listen to it. It sounds to me. Like a camel that's that's angry at my twaddle. That's what it sounds to me. It's and I like that. I, I need to be reminded reminded to not twaddle. So here we go. Listen. Audio jungle. <laughs> Audio jungle. I actually like the I like the follow on also. Audio jungle. <laughs> Oh god. This thing's five dollars. This thing's five dollars. <laughs> do we do we do we just cut it to be the first bit or do we do we make the whole thing? Listen again. Audio jungle. <laughs> Audio jungle. <laughs> it's the last one, dudes, that gets me. It's the last Audio one that gets me. There's so much pain in this camel's, like, in this noise. There's so much pain, you know, 
there's pain in the soul in the sun effect. <sighs> Goodness. It's five dollars. Hold on. Six dollars for multi-use, which I think is the one we have to get. Yeah, unlimited number of end products. Yeah, we're going to use this all over the place. <laughs> it's going to be used in many, many places. Because, I mean, just, I mean, just listen to this. Audio jungle. Audio jungle. <laughs> <clears throat> Good lord. That's our twaddle. That's our twaddle alarm, friends. Right. F six dollars. I mean, I. it has to happen. I, I, I can't turn back at this point. This is... We've gone too far. He's gone too far. Yeah. Take my money. It's actually eight dollars with VAT. Wow. Eight fifty. 8.50 I hope you guys appreciate this this is $8.50 for a twaddle alarm that's how we roll on this channel I only bring you the most professional in broadcasting broadcasting quality I, I hope you realize right let's download this bad boy get it plugged into <laughs> plugged into the soundboard Wait, is it night time yet? No, everything's fine. We should probably get into a safe... Dude, we're gonna get pranked. We're gonna get anviled over here. Hold on. Let's go. Let's go so somewhere safe. Let's go chill on the top of I buy. Here we go. All right. Whenever you hear this noise... <laughs> twaddle is afoot. Um, okay, let me get this thing plugged in, friends. I mean, this is the last 10 minutes has been nothing but twaddle. Uh, Proud Lini, thank you for the biddies. Profs, thank you for the biddies. For the twaddle! <laughs> Miss, Miss GVS, thank you very much. Wow, that's a lot of biddies. Thank you so very, very much, Miss GVS. That's so kind of you. And Mean Bean Art with the biddies too. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Uh, I've downloaded the file. We've got three. We've got three files out of this. Hold on. Winamp, it really whips the llama's ass. Kind of ironic that we're using Winamp to uh, listen to these samples, to be honest, considering the sound that we're emanating. Oh, Winamp's not working. Right. You guys got a hype train running. Thank you so much. It, it, it took the sound of ca a camel being angry at Twaddle to get the hype train going. Nice. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Dana no. Fabulous. No. <laughs> Okay, no. that's number one. <laughs> that's number two. <laughs> and this is my favorite. <laughs> Looks like we're going to have to make our own camel noise, friends. So, um, yeah. Let's do some professional um, some pre professional audioing, shall we? Thank you, Dana Fabulous. Guys, thank you so much, man. This is uh, crazy... <laughs> Thank you very much for all the bits and stuff coming in here, friends. Appreciate it, man. Deborah with the, the thousand biddies for unlimited twaddle sounds. <laughs> hey, real guy. How's it, my friend? Hey, real guy's here with biddies, too. Twaddle noise hype. <laughs> God, what have I done? Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Alexis, for the eight months in a row. Collie Wolf here with the biddies, too. Rosie Flamin Array with the biddies. Mother of Gamers with the Gifted Sub and Elf in the Dreams with the Biddies. Guys, thanks so much, man. That's a hype train been initiated. Thank you, friends. Um, hold on. Let me just get the camel noises into an editing software and then we can do this together, okay? Here we go. Does this work? There we go. Okay. Here we go. We're going to make uh, Twaddle... <sighs> twaddle Cam. Okay, you guys ready? <laughs> Gonna make the twaddle noise. Um, right, so this is the first one, I think. Or oh, this looks like the second one. Put that there. This is definitely the third one. So we'll put that at the end. And 
Let's have a quick listen. <laughs> oh god this hurts me okay uh this needs to i think we needed a bit of delay before the last one right like a bit of dramatic a dramatic pause you know how do i do this in how do i do this in audacity uh um is it draw draw tool zoom in further oh no no that's hmm how do i move this Oh, no, no, we don't want to silence it. Wait, how, can you add space? Whoops. I'm not very good at Audacity, to be fair. Um, do we add space? Is that how we do it? Generate silence uh, of five seconds? Okay, generate silence seems to work. Now we can delete the silence to the perfect position, right? So let's have a listen. Oh, just drag at the top? Okay. I see, I see. Okay, that's fine. I found a different way to do it, all right? This is rainstone. It ain't pretty, but it works. Sheesh. Wait, what? No, clear this. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. From the beginning. One, two, three. <laughs> I think these two need to be a little bit closer together. <laughs> that first one's got such gusto, right? <laughs> He's so angry. I think these two can be a little bit closer, actually. It sounds like um, two different camels. I want it to sound like it's coming out of the same camel hole. I think we're even closer. Even closer. Hold on. Even closer. Here we go. <laughs> Wait, um, you guys can't actually see anything that's happening here, can you? Hold on. Let me, let me shift this down for you. Okay, here we go. Um, what if we just fuse these two? Um, hold on. What if we do this? Hold on. Let's just undo. Let's work on the, the, the first ones first, right? Let me bring these into view for you guys. So here we go. There's the first one. Let's move the second one up, but try like get it over here. What the hell is What are we doing with our lives, guys? Honestly. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, it needs to be a little bit closer. A little bit closer. Okay. I'm, I'm channeling the camel. Okay, how's this? How's this for the start? Just put yourself in that camel right now, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Now we just need the... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Okay, is this it? Is this the one? No. 
<laughs> Maybe a little bit more space? I think that's the one. <laughs> Oh man. Oh goodness. All right. Let's get let let's get this into the soundboard before we get demonetized. <laughs> oh man. All right, let's get some music playing to to cleanse our ear holes from that nonsense. Wow. I mean, talk about twaddle. Goodness gracious. Um Hold on, friends. I'll be I'll be with you in a second, okay? We're doing professional streaming things right now, okay? Chill. Jeez. Camel One. This will be called Camel One dot Wav. Nice. All right. Let's get this thing into the onto the stream deck now. It sounds like a constipated camel. Well, remember that this noise is occurring when we twaddle, okay? So, think of the camel chilling and then the twaddle gets too much for the camel the camel gets so angry that it basically i guess it poops because that's what it sounds like to me that's what's happening it sounds like the camel poops there's no something's happening okay nobody sleeps on the server apparently when b00 isn't online friends twaddle must wait unfortunately Good sir, you're disturbing my rest. Thank you. Yeah, Be Bear. Hey, Bear, my friend, how you doing? We haven't done anything tonight, have we? We've achieved. We've achieved nothing. Does this go on YouTube? <laughs> this is surely not quality. This is not YouTube quality broadcasting. This is absolute nonsense. This is absolute twaddle. This is the most we've ever twaddled, people. <clears throat> anyway, where were we? Source. That's what we need. Oh, wait. Uh, sound? Can I put sound in here? Hmm. Wait. It's a very... Oh, here we go. Play audio. Okay, play audio. There we go. I'm a professional, by the way. Don't worry about it. Camel, where's camel? Dot wav. <laughs> now there's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Where's camel? Dot wav. Here it is. Let's test it out, guys. I got the button on the uh, the old cam. Can can you guys see this? No. Oh, believe me, it's the buttons on the stream deck. Here we go. We're gonna test it. Silence music. <laughs> now the real question is was that was that was all of that worth it was all of that worth it in the end keyboard spieler and my good friend what's happening thank you very much for the biddies i love the sounds but they're a tad too loud I have you turned down to the point of barely hearing you, and it's still screaming across the apartment. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is it really ga loud, guys? Is the camel noise really loud? <laughs> Elf and Dreams, thank you for the biddies. Mother of Gamers here, thank you very much again for the gifted sub. Rosie Flam uh, Flam and Ray with the biddies also. Total noise for rain fun, thank you guys. The camel, okay, it's it's very loud. I can crank the camel down a bit. Hold on. Chill, people. Here we go. We can crank that camel down a bit. Let's drop it... Um... Whoops. Let's drop it 30%. How's this? <laughs> oh, it gets me every time. It gets me every time. It needs to be loud so you know when to stop twaddling. 
Shall we turn it up 10%? Turn it up 10%. Here we go. 10% up. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, what a joyous bit of broadcasting this evening has been, my friends. Send my CV to the BBC. This is what we call modern radio. Wow. Right. Back to road building. Let's go. We've got some more blocks to place. We were going to turn this little alleyway into slabs, weren't we? Let's get on with that, shall we? Unbelievable. <sighs> Unbelievable. Hey, by the way, uh, all you beautiful British fans out there, um, I, while I was talking to Azuma about the royal family, I, I didn't get a chance to re-chat. I would love to get your opinions on the royal family uh, sitcom from the late 90s, early noughties. Sorry, early 2000s. I'm, I'm very fascinated to know if um, the British public liked the royal family or thought that it was a bunch of twaddle. Because I actually really... The first couple of episodes I didn't really enjoy because it was weird. It was so weird. Um, the Royal Family, for those of you guys who are joining us, is a, a very old BBC sitcom, a British sitcom. And it's it's like a mockumentary, like The Office, but they try to make it as realistic as possible. It's basically just a family that sit in a, in a TV room watching TV and talking to each other. Like, And they talk, they talk absolute... <laughs> They talk about, like, kidney pie for, like, 10 minutes. In one episode, they watch pretty much an entire episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. That's the episode. They, they watch Who Wants, to be the Mil um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. That's the episode. It's, it's outrageous. But it's amazing. You loved it? It was super popular? Never watched it? It's funny. It reminded me a lot of my family in a way. That's what I thought. Like, I know a couple of British families, and I was like, the, the British families I know are, are, are so similar. They have such similar mannerisms and, uh, and habits and stuff to this family. That's what blew my mind the most about it. So it, it, it really did feel like a, from my experience of what a British family is, it, it really did feel like, like that. It was uh, quite, quite strange. Quite a strange experience to watch as a as a foreigner you know as a, a, a as an immigrant was a laugh yeah the, yeah the dad is uh, is hilarious the writer caroline arhoon was so talented oh yeah yeah i mean the, the writing is incredible incredible all right so it, it feels like it was quite popular um at the time Am I correct in saying that, like, uh, the office, the UK office actually stole quite a lot from Royal Family? Because it feels like, uh, even, like, um, in the dad's mannerisms, um, Gervais, like, like, borrows a lot of his mannerisms in David Brent. Like, I almost feel like this was a huge influence to, to Ricky Gervais. Like, this show influenced him in a big way. I could be wrong though, The Office might have come first and in fact the royal family stole from The Office, but I'm... It feels to me like it was the other way around. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't travel well, I think. It, it is a... it is a... it's like super British. You know what it kind of reminds me of? It reminds me a little bit of Trailer Park Boys. It, it, this, it's almost like the Trailer Park Boys of the UK, in a way. Um, Trailer Park Boys being like a... A Canadian mockumentary which I suspect is not very popular outside of Canada because it's very weird I love it though it's probably one of my top 10 favorite mockumentaries of all time it's amazing the office was well after I thought so there's so much in the royal family that Gervais nicks he nicks so much from this it's amazing I, I want did he ever give the show credit I don't think I've ever heard him talking about it, but he 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 should have because he nicked a lot. Just the format of it, right? Like keeping everything as realistic as possible. You know how in the UK office you'll have a moment where the camera focuses on a on a printer, 
And you know, Gervais in, in interviews about The Office is like, oh yeah, we wanted to use those real life moments to, you know, to really bring out the realness of the, of, man, Royal Family was doing this like 10 years before The Office. Damn hack. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm a huge Gervais fan. Well, old, old, old Gervais. New Gervais, not so much. Old Gervais. Um, how are we looking here, by the way, with the slab idea? Did this work out in the end? Let's have a look from the, from a bird's eye view. Still got a few more slabs to add over there, though. Let's go do this. Yeah, the, I mean, look, uh, um, Trailer Park Boys and, and Royal Family, yes, they are very different. But what I mean is, um, what I'm trying to get at is that they're, they're like popular locally because they're very local, right? And outside of their countries, they're a little bit harder to like hit the mainstream because the jokes are kind of inside jokes. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm trying to say uh, when I compare the two. Certainly in content and, and uh, production, they're wildly different, of course. How's this looking? I think that turned out quite nice, actually. I think we could probably add more cobbled texture into it, though. I think I went a little bit over the top with these ones, with the bricks and the tiles. Let's just swap some of these out for more um, cobbled deep state, actually. Anyway, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Brits, for your input and um, thoughts on the royal family. It's just a show that I watched this week that I was I, I was fascinated by, and the last episode made me cry. <laughs> Not ashamed to admit it. It's uh, an incredibly moving. It's probably one of the most moving final episodes of a se of a series that I've ever seen. It just uh, wow, just it knocked me on my. Knock me on my on on me arse, <laughs> as uh, as a quote from the show. <clears throat> I think we just might have unyoutubed ourselves there. Whoops. Gonna have to give this stream a good a good hard think once again if this goes on YouTube or not, guys. I think this might be another unfriendly vod. <laughs> I think the camel agrees. Dang it! Burn through these um, these things real quick. Some more slavage, please. Thank you. There's actually another moment. Sorry, sorry to go on about this, but there's another moment from Extras where it's very, very clear now. Now, now that I think about it, it's very clear that Ricky Gervais borrowed from the royal family. You know, in Extras, he does that uh, sitcom where he's like the boss of that factory, and he wears the glasses and the wig. He does this like me, 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 me. He does this weird thing with his mouth. That is exactly what the dad in Royal Family does. That exact movement when he goes, mm -hmm. he like does this, this disapproving head shake and like lip, lip movement. You know what I'm talking about, Brits? You know what I'm talking about, right? That was yoinked straight from Royal Family. Like just a direct, just a, a direct rip. Ah, oh, you hate to see it. Keyboard, thanks for the more biddies there, my friend. I love the sounds, but they're a tad loud. I, oh, wait. Wait, what? Oh, that was... <laughs> That was, uh, we already read that one, Keyboard. Thank you to Jaeger uh, again. Uh, the twaddle tax. Uh, another tip here from Jaeger too. Have you ever seen the Sith Fury class interceptor from Star Wars The Old Republic? If not, it's not. Uh, it's a must-see. I've not seen that yet, uh, but that sounds pretty awesome. I'll look into that, Jaeger. Thank you. And also, Curls of Doom. Dude, I missed your, uh, your very generous tip earlier on. I hope you realize that if you put the sound on a custom horn audio, you can prank all the hermits so gloriously. That's an excellent idea. Also, can I can I say a big shout out? I completely missed this while editing that ridiculous camel noise for 20 minutes. Uh, a big thank you to the wonderful, amazing Cezero, who actually completely funded the purchase of camel uh, with an £8.50 
um, tip. So, so basically, Cezero purchased the camel noise for us today. So thank you very, very much, Cezero. That is very, very kind of you. Thank you so much um, for foot, footing the bill. Cezero, are you sure you're proud of what you do you've done? This is what you've done, baby. What have we done today, guys? Unbelievable, man. You think my mama would be proud of me right now? I highly doubt it. <laughs> God almighty. A truly amazing com accomplishment. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Um, let's get some more blocks down here, friends. We've got work to do. Sheesh. Okay, this is looking good. I'm happy where we're at. I keep losing my shovel also. Alright, there we go. So, we made a little alleyway here. I'm thinking let's open this up a bit. Yeah, we can make this alleyway feel a little bit thicker here, right? Maybe another bit of granite here. Alright, that looks good. Let's clean up. This is way too many accent blocks here. I, I went a little bit crazy on the accent blocks. But it's because we only get one variation of... Uh, deep slate in slab form, you know um, In full block form deep slate like makes all these beautiful textures depending on which way you place the block Which is why deep slate is like legit my top favorite block in the game It's just such an incredibly versatile building block. I love it so much I just wish we could insta mine it with efficiency 5 and and beacon uh, Netherite pickaxe that would be wonderful Just gonna keep saying that until it happens Tony says, hey, Ren, looking good, brother. Much love from South Africa, Brie. How's it, Brie? Yo, I was telling the other Saffirs in chat earlier, Brie, I had a bride today, eh? It was raining, but here in England, we don't care, Brie. If it's like 20 degrees plus, we bri. Rain or shine. That's how we, that's how South Africans do it in, uh, in, 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 in England. You know what I mean? Like, no weather's going to stop a South African brying. That's all I'm saying, Brie. And let me tell you, it was lacquer, eh? Yo. Yo. It was a lacquer bribery. It was hectic. It was hectic. <laughs> oh, man. I had mealies today on the bribe, which I haven't had in a while. Uh, and I always loved mealies on the bribe. My, my parents used to make them. Uh, well, they used to make them, with, like, in the early days, and then they stopped making them for some reason. I don't know why. But um, when we, we used to go fishing, like, sometimes we used to go on a fishing holiday and we used to have mealies on the bribe. And that was so good. Yeah, you can never miss a chance to bribery. Like in winter, the winters are really, really hectic here. Eh? Like, it just rains all the time. It's really cold. It's not nice brying when it's like minus two and rain. You know, I'll do it though, but it's not nice. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's rough. We make it happen though. The South Africans make it happen. Let me tell you. You know what I'm thinking, guys? Do we keep this road all on this level here? Like, all of this nonsense that we set up here, this is unnecessary. Let's get rid of all of this. We're going to keep the road on this level here. Or we could even keep it on slab level, actually. The road that goes around here. Although, this this gives us more space to add a nice proper sidewalk on the side, right? Like, we could add a proper sidewalk here. We kind of need to dig away this mountainside, too, to get a decent sidewalk going. It's actually a lot of work that needs to be done on these roads, guys. A lot. Oh my goodness. Jaeger, dude, that is... Bro, that's an outrageous tip. Thank you so much, Jaeger. That's very generous of you, man. You've been rolling the tips in these last few streams, and uh, you've been very generous to me. Thank you so much, Jaeger. Uh, consider this funding for an attempt at building the Fury class interceptor as a base piece. Amazing amazing dude thank you so much um that is very very kind of you thank you so much like do you mean like uh, the lego version is that what you mean building the fury class interceptor as a base piece or do you mean like in minecraft like what do you mean is there a, is there a lego version of this ship that you're talking about either way dude that's very generous of you thank you so very much i appreciate that thank you that uh, that funding shall i'm it will definitely go towards something Star Wars. Don't you worry. <laughs> what is a milli? <laughs> Says mummy. 
Yo, South Africans, eh? We sometimes we forget we're not talking with others. We're, 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 we're talking with non South Africans in this stream, eh? A milli is a corn. Yes. A milli is a corn. A, a, a cob. A corn. A cob of corn. Hold on. I'll, I'll try to find a picture for you. Millie on the braai. Millie on the braai. Here we go. Oh, this is going to make me so hungry, though. Oh, God. This is, this is, this is not good. This is not good. Hold on. Hold on. Let me push the right buttons here. Here we go. This is a Millie on the braai. Oh, and you put, but you put butter on it. You put like a salted full fat butter like once it's been on the barbecue and you gotta you gotta barbecue it over coals like real coals like charcoal you know not like petrol soaked coal like proper coal oh look at this this is a bit too much rubbish on it i don't i don't like you know what i mean south africans we don't like having all this cuck <laughs> whoops there goes the monetization on youtube my bad Sorry, I, I, I got too deep into the South Africanness there. Yammer, ne? South Afrikaners, yammer, yer, yammer. As your Oma lays to know. Yammer, Oma. Yeah, dude. These, oh man, Mili on the Bry. So good. So good. So, this, this is a Mili. This is what we call a Mili. You can bride in different ways. Some people will bride in the skin, like barbecue it in the... What are those things? What are these things? The leaves? But I like to... Um, I like to take it out of the leaves. I actually give it a really quick blast in the microwave. 30 seconds or so. Just to get the juices inside of the... Um, the, the corns are flowing a little bit, you know? Just to like loosen up the liquid inside. And then boom, straight on the barbecue... And I like to I like to baste it with butter while it's cooking. You know, get it, get a bit of melted butter. Uh, I like to put a little bit of garlic, like I crush a bit of garlic into the butter, and then just give it a nice. Some people put sugar into the butter also, if you if you want a, a sweeter one. But I find the corns in England are like really really sweet. In South Africa, the corns are are not as sweet. You know, they're more vegetable-y, but here they're like ultra sweet, like really really sweet. So I don't like putting sugar into it. Um, but yeah, these are these are really really good. Yeah, look at this. This is this is the kind of business that I like, man. You got that beautiful barbecued corn cob, and then this looks like garlic butter, like like parsley butter, on top. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about, friends. That is what I'm talking about. South Africans know how to cook on a on a braai. Let me tell you, South Africans and Australians, we don't mess around. We don't mess around when it comes to barbecuing. If you ever have the have the the chance and the honor to to have a barbecue done for you by a South African, do not say no. Say yes. Trust me. Trust me. Oh man, now I'm just looking up food. This is bad. Another very fantastic um, South African braai recipe that I love very very much are prawns on the braai. I don't know what you guys call these. In America, I think these are called shrimps. We call them prawns. And um, these are big, right? These are like a good three, four inches. <laughs> and I like to do prawns like this with garlic and butter only. Sometimes a bit of chili, depending if I'm like in a chili mood. And... Um, you butterfly them, you clean them out, then you just, you know, you put them on the, on the, on the barbecue just like that. And you just baste them. You just baste them liberally with butter and garlic. Mm. Or you can make like a peri-peri ma marinade. Peri-peri is like a South African, I don't know if it is, originates from South Africa. It might be like a Jamaican flavoring, but it's kind of like a sweet, sour, hot marinade. And you can marinate the prawns in, in peri-peri overnight. That's also amazing because then the peri peri goes into the heads. And man, there's a lot of good flavors in them heads, man. Mm. And then, of course, they only take a couple minutes on the barbecue. You want to do it when the barbecue's down a bit, right? Not like at super hot speed, uh, yeah, speeds, hot temperatures. And then they come straight off the barbecue onto a nice big tray. And then you just squirt 
a lemon south africans are like quite like we, we we're not delicate people you know what i'm saying we're not a delicate people we do things like quite aggressively at the best of times we're quite we're quite brash and aggressive but we're also very honest we, you know we're, we're people that'll be honest with you we we tell you how we see it but you know you take half a lemon in this claw half a lemon in this claw and you squeeze them bad boys all over them prawns as they come off the barbecue you want the smoke the steam the lemon juice steam flying off of those things and then those things go straight into the butthole of the face which is the mouth while they're hot and you just before they go into there you got to cover them in the, the garlic juices with the the butter and i'm telling you now you won't taste a better prawn than that absolute twaddle south africans know what i'm talking about though uh-oh <laughs> uh excuse me i'm busy busy twaddling thank you Oh, man, I'm so hungry now, guys. I'm so hungry now. I've got to go to bed in a moment. i got editing to do tomorrow, man. Jeez. So hungry. All right. Uh, tell you what. Let's just figure out, like, a border here for granite. And we also need to figure out how this is going to connect to this road, too, right? So this is going to be the connection. We do need to come down at some point, but that's fine. We How did we do it here? Okay, these were just with some slams. That is fine. Uh, hello. Excuse me, friends. I have a problem that I must deal with now. Jaeger says, uh, there is a Lego version, but it's out of circulation, though. I was thinking of Minecraft when I sent that. Oh, you did? Dude, okay, hold on. There's a Lego version? Wait, there's a creeper close by. Let's just um, remove ourselves. Hold on. I want to see if this Lego version exists. I Star Wars Lego is the best. I mean, as you can see, I've got a lot of Star Wars Lego in this uh, beautiful array. We've got Mandalorian uh, breast thing. We've got X-Wing. We've got TIE Fighter. Also, I do have another bit of Lego that you can't actually see. Hold on. literally our uh, our season six base but um it doesn't fit in the hole one second <coughs> would be nice though but yeah also um star wars pajamas Not obsessed or anything, just like Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I love these PJs too, they're great. They're very warm too. I think I just have Star Wars pajamas actually. I'm seven years old, but I, I have five year olds pajamas. It's actually a very sad state of affairs, to be honest. I mean, single for life, friends. Single for life. <laughs> Oh, man. Carrie, you wearing Grogu pants? Nice. 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 Nice, Carrie. You've just gone three steps up in my already highly, highly um, high ranking of you, Carrie. Jimmy the Wizard with the biddies. Hey, Ren. I go to Cape Town, South Africa a lot. Uh, as cabin crew what's the best way to experience a bry as a tourist um if i don't have local friends you know what south africans are actually really really friendly i don't know if um, in your time that you've spent in cape town you've noticed that south africans are generally like friendlier than a lot of many other countries in fact um they're almost like strangely friendly it's almost like a little bit creepy you know um <laughs> It might be tough, though, like getting yourself to an actual braai. 
you know what you know what i would suggest this is what i would suggest make friends with some some south african cabin crew and i promise you now a south african cabin crew person will have a braai in the agenda pretty much any time they touch down in south africa so just ask to go along with them like if you, probably their mum or dad would come pick them up from the airport take them home for a braai and then bring them back to work and you could just tag along you know that's what i would do i'd look for a a south african colleague and um and get in that way <laughs> mr zaps thank you very much for the party raid my friend welcome to all the zappers welcome to the stream guys we're building roads and talking twaddle as usual <laughs> all the all the guys south africans near me have very short shorts <laughs> I never understood it. It's because we're blessed and we want to we want to show the world what we've been blessed with. <laughs> no, I don't know I, I don't know why either. It is very strange. I was never a, a tiny short man. Um, I never got into the tiny shorts, but a lot of my friends, yeah, they, they, mm, they sh you see everything. Let's be, let's be honest. You see everything. It's outrageous. Outrageous. Um, <sighs> another stream that doesn't make it onto YouTube, guys. You hate to see it, really. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> it's the best sound ever. That's our best sound effect of all time. It did cost us eight bucks, though. So, you know, it better be good. <laughs> Mandali says, uh, one of my dearest friends is from Ethiopia. She just got back to Canada from six weeks in Africa. And, uh, and, and all she brought home, and all she brought home was oranges. Why the oranges? Oh, yeah, the oranges from Africa are, oh, God, they're so good. I think it's the sunshine. Um, the African sun is a little bit different to the northern hemisphere, or at least the southern African sun. Um, or even like the, the, equi the, the, ec the equator uh, countries, too. I think the sun is just, I don't know. In, I think in general, the soil and the sun are just, there's just more nutrients in them, more sugars, more natural like goodness you know so uh yeah fruit from africa is just mm, it is just glorious who was that it was cub fan scaring the living heck out of me man as usual all right um problem with just doing slabs here though is we don't get a lot of textures with the slabs right that's the problem also, I've noticed like a lot of this. This isn't. This is bothering me. This needs to need to have a little bit of variation here. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, that was like all of the blocks were hugging the sides. You know, like over and over again. Not enjoying that. Okay, there we go. I've, I'm worried about this now. I'm worried about this. I feel like. Did Scar and B-dubs do any other roads with just slabs? I don't think so. This is not slab. Yeah, they were all full blocks because you can get these really cool little patches of texture into the road when you use the full blocks. Hmm. Well, first things first, we need to figure out how thick this road's going to be. Right? We also need to do some patchwork here. A family member from Africa will eat a whole bundle of grapes in one sitting. That's not normal in the USA. Oh, we, we'll eat grapes until we explode. You know, um, my my first home that I grew up in in South Africa, I, I was born in a in a town called Bloemfontein. 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 Bloemfontein uh, translates translates to flower fountain, which is a really I've always loved this name. And as you old school rain doggers will know, birthplace of J.R.R. Tolkien. 
So one of my very few claims to fame is that I was born in the same place as Tolkien, <laughs> which I think is pretty cool. Um, anyway, in Bloemfontein, in my first home that I grew up in, so from the ages of uh, up until I was six years old, um, my, my father passed away when I was six. And after that, my mum, understandably, we, we, left the, we left the city to go somewhere else. I think my mum wanted to get away from the, the pain of what happened then. You know, it was, I had a younger brother of four and I was six when my father passed away. So it was quite a crazy period of life for my mum. And so she moved us out of the house. But I don't really remember that much from those days. And I, I don't remember that much from my, my dad, my biological dad. Um, of course, my mum remarried and I have a stepfather now who, who is my father. You know, he, he brought me up. He made me into the man that I am today and I adore him. And, um, you know, he's been the, my, one of my greatest inspirations in life. He is my dad, you know. Um, but of course, I had a, biolog a biological dad too, but he passed away when I was very young. You know, I, I hardly remember anything about him. I, I have a couple of memories. One of which is asking him which foot I should put my socks on, as if they were shoes. You know, I, I went up to him with two socks and I asked him, what foot should I put the sock on? And he said, don't be silly, socks can go on any feet. Something like that. That's like one of my, I think it's my most vivid memory. And another memory that I have of him is, uh, involves grapes. Because the house that I grew up in, in Bloemfontein, had um, a little veranda out the front with massive beautiful white grapes um, like grown into a canopy above the veranda so you would be sitting outside in the garden and you would have grapes like above you and it also had like a little courtyard in the middle of the, the house was kind of like this hold on let me show you with blocks hold on let's just sleep first and that's what's great about living in um in South Africa, in Southern Africa, in Equatorial Africa or America, you know, you, you can like grow fruit and stuff in your in your gardens, which is really, really awesome. Um, but the house was a little bit like this, right? There was like a little courtyard in the middle. So this, my room was here, my brother's room was here, or my brother and I shared this room and my parents' room was here and the TV room was here and there was like a, the entryway was here into the house and then there was like a dining room and this was the kitchen. And then here was like a patio. And over here, where my parents and my and my my brother over here was like a veranda, right? So so there were grapes growing above this white grapes above this veranda, and above the courtyard were red grapes. And my dad used to uh, to eat grapes like every day, like from the vines. And I just remember him giving me grapes from he picked them and like gave them to me like a whole bunch, and I just ate them all, <laughs> and they were amazing. And that, I, that, that's, that's all. That's all I got for you, man. That's all I can remember. Um, but yeah, the, the fruit from South Africa, from Southern Africa, not just South Africa, of course. There's many amazing, um, amazing places in, in Africa too that grow incredible fruit. Uh, it's always good. And, and, you know, for me, like one of my favorite fruits in South Africa is the mango. Mangoes and avocados in South Africa are just so damn good. I'm telling you, man, you have not had a mango until you've had a mango from South Africa. My um, my grandfather used to grow them, actually. He was a farmer and um, he used to have mangoes and guavas. Guava is like a, maybe a, South Afri a, a Southern African fruit. I don't know if you guys know what a guava is. <laughs> he used to grow lychees and uh, pecan nuts. And my brother, my mum took us to go and visit him um, when my father passed away. We went to stay there a couple weeks, I think. My mum was trying to spend some time with family, you know, at the time. And my brother and I just went around the farm just eating whatever we could shove in our face. Just nuts. And mangoes and guavas. It hurts. The twaddle hurts. <laughs> uh, but yeah amazing mangoes man when I, where i went to university in um, in south africa i i spent my final year my final two years at university in a digs in a house share with other students 
And in our digs, in our sh in our house share, we had an avo tree. And uh, at, the t at the time, I had a girlfriend and, and every morning. And I mean, how is it this beautiful specimen is, is not like instantly married, people? I just don't understand. I used to spend, during the avo season, I would wake up early in the morning. I'd climb up that dang tree like a chimp. I'd pick the ripest avo. I would slice that avo in twain. Put the avo onto freshly toasted bread with a bit of olive oil, salt and pepper and deliver it to my fair maiden in bed. Yeah, like a caveman, basically. Like, I bring food. I do man bit. I do my man thing. Food. Here, food. It was good. I liked it. I liked bringing her ever. <laughs> my reptile brain was pleased. I was able to do my manly business, which was, uh, well, it's not, not exactly hunting mammoths. I'll give you that. Like picking avos aren't ex I could have fallen out the tree. I could have hurt myself. I'm just saying. You know, there could have been an accident. I put my life at risk for the avo. Just like my ancestors before me went and collected the mammoths. I went and got the avos. Okay? It is a wonder that I'm I'm not married. Sure. A surprise. Even. We're starting to reach that point in the evening where the twaddle is uh, really starting to kick in. At least we're making progress, though. It feels like this road is roading, slowly but surely. Oh, Jaeger, I, dude, I'm so sorry. I've got completely distracted by twaddle. You, d you did a check, and... Uh, and you'd be looking at anywhere between 150 and 450 dollars for the Lego set. Okay, now I must know what this looks like. Hold on, one second. What, uh, uh, man? What did I get? To, I got so distracted. I'm so sorry. I was going to look at this. Uh, Fury class interceptor. Lego. Oh, why have you done this to me, sir? Why? Is it this one? That is so freaking awesome. Oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, I mean, epic. Epic. Yeah, good dude. This is like... Yeah. Yeah. Look at it! Look at, look at the back! Look how good it is! Yeah. No, no, no. That, that, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. That'll have to go into the, uh, the Xmas wish list, I think. I'll keep my eye out on eBay for a for a secondhand copy. I think. I'm assuming that builders or Star Wars fans very seldom sell it secondhand, though. So um, I might be looking for it for a while. Beautiful ship, though. Beautiful, amazing. Uh, you know what? It kind of reminds me a little bit of the um, the Tie Fighter that I made in season six. But the Tie Fighter I made was. Um, a, 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 a Tie 2, I think it was called. Tie Class 2. I can't remember exactly the the nomenclature of it, but it had a similar like wing shape to the back. But I like the Interceptor because the wings have that like pa um, that indent, you know, along the perimeters of the wings. So cool. And and the the boosters in the back are just ooh, mwah, beautiful. Yeah, the tie advance, that's it. 
Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, you've always got my back. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate you, dude. <laughs> Helping me not look like a foolio in front of all the Star Wars fans out there. I mean, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but, you know, people people think that I'm like a one of those encyclopedia Star Wars fans, but I'm not one of those. Like, I love Star Wars. I love the franchise. I love the uh, the art. I love everything about Star Wars, but I'm not like... I'm not encyclopedia fan, Star Wars fan, you know? I just, I do love it though, like very, very much. I'm always excited to see Star Wars stuff, always excited to watch the, the films. All of them too. You know, I'm not a massive fan of the modern films, but I'm not like a huge hater either. Like I, at least I get to watch Star Wars. That's how I, that's how I see them, you know? At least I get my Star Wars fix. Tree, you're in the way. It's fine, we'll deal with that later. Uh, we're hitting the same problem now though, right? Because we're probably going to have to raise everything up here now. Mm. Same issue as we had before. Because I want to do this treatment to the road here, to this road. But that means we have to do... Basically have to do this. Maybe it's not so bad, but then we're kind of like losing. Ah, uh, you know what? It's actually not, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Never mind. This is fine. Let's finish this off. Helena, thank you so very much for the four months resub. Woohoo! Have a nice stream. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome back, Hel Helena. My, my apologies. I said it incorrectly. Helena. Jaeger, I shall put that your very generous funds toward my Lego Interceptor build. All right, maybe we'll do it together on Christmas. How about Christmas Day? Build the uh, the Sith Fury class interceptor together on stream, huh? Huh? That sounds like a that sounds like a good time. That sounds like a good Christmas Day to me. <laughs> I um I have a tradition of building Lego on Christmas Day. I usually get some Lego from my my close friends here in England. Um, last Christmas I got the the Mandalorian uh, bust, which is pretty sweet. I, I think I got the bust and the X-Wing, I think. And I actually have another one that I haven't built yet. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, oh! Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have one more I haven't built yet. This was for Christmas also. This is a Christmas present. That's got to be built ASAP, right? That'll fit quite nicely in here, I think. I think there's space there for another bust. We could put the the Darth Vader helm there also. These are these are excellent, by the way. Highly recommended. Um, highly recommended sets. They were very very fun to build and very satisfying to complete. Also, very cool. But yeah, so last Christmas I I built. I, I like to build Lego on Christmas. <laughs> it's pretty much the only day that I build Lego. <laughs> it's on Christmas. Nashi Poo, brand new subscriber in the house. Oh my goodness. I, Yo, Nashi. We have to go full cam for this. And we also have to camel noise because I think you might be our very first brand new subscriber today. <laughs> I don't think we've had any other brand new subscribers today. So thank you very much, Nashi. I appreciate that. And, um... I hope you're enjoying the stream and that you'll stick around with us here on the channel. <laughs> you made the camel bleep, Nashi. Oh man, I can understand why that interceptor is is uh, demanding those prices, Jaeger. It's a that's a good build. That is a very good build. Building Lego is a perfect date activity. Uh, says Sumasumi. Hey Sumasumi, what's happening, baby? What's happening? You know what? I can see building Lego as being a good date um, date activity because it truly tests your potential relationship from day one. <laughs> you know, because much like you know, uh, much like the old mantra that that you can you can date someone, but you can't necessarily live with somebody. It's the same sort of thing, right? You can date somebody and be like, uh, and get really, and have a great relationship with somebody, but you can't necessarily build Lego with somebody. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it takes real chemistry to be able to build Lego with, with someone. 
it's like one of those activities that can go horribly wrong like if one of you is too controlling or one of you uh doesn't like is is incapable of sharing properly or whatever you know like it's a true test of your chemistry for sure interesting i've never thought about i've never thought about lego in that way first date activity build lego <laughs> i mean that sounds like a great first date to me but i i it's unclear to me if there would be many ladies interested in building a lego let's be fair especially at my age you know because being seven years old and all <clears throat> uh mean be not brand new subscriber in the house dude second brand new subscriber hey what's happening dude welcome 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 that's so kind of you thank you and uh yee is here also with the 15 months in all right uh emma animations here with a emma three months in a row what's up welcome back emma thank you so much thank you thank you myself and my boyfriend built custom gundams together I'm gonna make the sad camel noises because I'm sad, because I'm jealous. I want to make Gundams. <laughs> Shall we uh, get rid of this tree? My wife and I race Lego builds. We get we get a set each and build at the same time. Uh you guys man, you guys got lucky. Nice. <laughs> Do whatever it takes to hold on to each other. That's all I'm saying. Sounds like a match made in heaven. Hey Ren to get a dog fan. What's up, my dude? What's up? Yeah, the camel agrees. Exactly. Oh, the old camel. Guys, we need a name for this camel. I just realized we uh, we failed to name the poor bugger. <laughs> we make him bleat, but we, we don't even give him a name. You hate to see it. What's a good name for a camel? Unclear. Terence. <laughs> uh, it's got to be something like really generic, you know? Terence the Twaddler. <laughs> something, something very serious. What's the most serious name in, in the English language? <laughs> Brian. I like Brian. That's a good one. What about, um, man, it's the most serious name in the English language, guys. Harold. Maximilian. <laughs> it's a pretty serious name. <laughs> Reginald. Reginald's a good one. I feel like Reginald is overused, though, for, uh, for memes and lols. Charles. Bartholomew! Failed vegan? You nailed it. Everybody, please say a warm, happy, hello, welcoming to Bartholomew Twaddle. <coughs> Bartholomew Twaddleston has entered the room. All hail Bartholomew Twaddleston, Lord of the Twaddle. Keeper of all that is twaddlethic, twaddlethic, and master of the Twaddlerian race. <laughs> oh, Bartholomew is so good. <laughs> that's that's amazing, dude. That's oh, you made my day. Good old Barth Bartholomew. Wait, is that Bart Simpson's actual name? Did we just learn something new today? 
Is Bart Simpson's real name Bartholomew? If so, that kind of blows my mind. Really, it is? What the heck? That's crazy. So much twaddle in the inventory and I've done nothing. Goodness gracious, people. Jeez. Hold on. Need more slabs. Slabs? <laughs> Barry Allen. <laughs> That's a great name for the camel too, to be fair. Like a double-barreled name, right? Barry Allen. Barry Allen Twaddleston. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yes. I like. Alright. Deeds? I think we've actually achieved something today, other than... 100% unadulterated twaddle. We made a road. Well, we twaddled a lot. We twaddled with, um... We twaddled... <sighs> Can't even say the word anymore. We twaddled with Exuma for about an hour. And then we made roads. So I suppose it's been a reasonably successful stream. <laughs> Unfortunately, I th I don't think we make it onto YouTube though. So sad face. <laughs> Another VOD renegated. I think this road turned out pretty nice, though. I'm not going to lie. Right? I think we've done a good job. Despite all the twaddles, we, uh... I think we did a pretty good job. Look at Cub Fan just cruising. Hyperspeeding back to the museum, man. Uh, Cleo and Cub are doing such a great job on those museums. Next episode, I go for a tour in both of those museums. Actually, no. Next episode is, is Cub, and the episode after is Cleo. Yes. Cinnamon Bun Puff says, first Ren stream, 10 out of 10 best experience. <laughs> Comp uh, that cannot be right. You, you're not watching enough streams if you think this is the best that's, that Twitch has to offer. <laughs> this is outrageous twaddle, honestly. Outrageous twaddle. Um. <laughs> anyway, let's have a quick look here. Get more food. Silence you. Um, anyway, yes. Roads looking great. Listen, dudes. You guys have been uh, incredibly generous today. Thank you so very much, everybody, for the outrageous amount of subs um, that came in today. Thank you very much. Actually, so many bits today. And, uh, and tips. Very, very generous, everybody. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. I mean, we're, we're, sitting, we're sitting today on 1,049 subscribers, which is way more than we ever anticipated for the month of June. My target for June was 750, and I didn't think we'd get anywhere near that because we hadn't streamed for a while, and, um, you know, the, the, the economics of the world are under pressure, and people... You know, subscribing to Twitch streamers isn't exactly where a lot of people are at right now. And I get it. Totally understandable. So, for us to get anywhere near 750 was a great achievement. And the fact that we are way over that is just, yeah, unbelievable, guys. Thanks so very, very much. Um, it really, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I can only, you know, say so many words over and over again before they start to lose their meaning. But I, I really appreciate it, friends. Uh, I want to say a very special thank you to the moderators who look after the stream also. Without them, I couldn't focus on just twaddling around. Um, 
I need my people to help me look after the chat so that I can twaddle. You know, this is a symbiotic twaddleification that's been happening between us. And um, thank you very much, Mods. You know that I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you for everything that you do. And uh, of course, for all of you guys who watch and who sit through this nonsense, thank you very, very much uh, also. Uh, make sure if you do enjoy this nonsense to check out our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Rendog TV. It's just Rendog TV. Subscribe there. And please, for the love of all that is twaddle, leave some comments. People, they don't comment on my VODs. You know, it hurts me. Please go just, just go write the word twaddle. That, that's, you could just write twaddle. It's fine. Anything for the algorithm. <laughs> I hate the algorithm. Got to pay the bills though. You know what I'm saying, my friends? <laughs> Got to get some eyeballs on those videos. So please do help me out with some, uh, some comments and some likes and some subscriptions there on the, uh, the YouTube channel. Anyway, friends, we will see you all again, most likely Tuesday. Okay. So have a great weekend. Look after yourselves. Get some millies on the bry. I'm telling you, man, Millie's on the bride with a bit of butter. Oh, amazing, amazing. And uh, we'll see you guys all again real, real soon. I'll let you guys go and search for whatever you want to watch, okay? Uh, that's going to do it from us. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next uh, twaddlification of a stream. I mean, any last words, Bartholomew uh, Twaddleston? Yeah, I agree. Uh, bye, guys. <laughs>